Your favorite thing, Scraby, a carryover from yesterday. His mouth isn't working that, again. Oh, my gosh, that's so true. He's got a carryover. Oh, my gosh, Tony. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with my mouth right now. <laughs> We're not even a minute and 20 seconds into the show. Not even 20 seconds. Don't give yourself, don't give yourself so much credit. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, welcome into Gwen and Chris. On this beautiful Thursday yeah. afternoon is what I attempted to it say. It is beautiful, it especially is. if you spent the last three days like I did in Reno, Nevada. Yeah. It is wonderful to be back home in the sunny San Diego, for sure. Hold on, I got to fix this camera. All right. I literally just fixed it. It was up too close, man. You like to have it like up my nose. He likes the nostril shots. Yeah, I don't want the nostril shot, man. There we go. A little, a little distance. A little <laughs> okay, distance. <fine. laughs> um, we got a great show for you guys lined up today. I'm excited. San Diego's son. San Diego's favorite son, Joe Musgrove, joins the show in, at the 3 o'clock hour. We got a chance to catch up with him before the show. They had an off day. He was nice enough on his off day to spend 10 minutes with us. Yeah, and uh, we want to welcome him to the show because we taught him during the interview yes. how to sign on to YouTube and uh, watch the program by yeah. uh, searching for 97.3 The Fan. It was a, it was a fun, serious conversation. Yeah, we, had a uh, good time. we don't want to give up too much of it, but you'll be entertained. Also, in this hour um san diego state's head coach sean lewis joins us uh the football coach yeah. who uh has already got this place buzzing a little bit about not our place not not odyssey but the city he buzzing does. a little bit about you know what he's um kind of already been able to do in a short period of time in terms of talent so we look forward to i know i can't wait for the well. season because of this guy and uh you know, I mean, J.D. Wicker did a great job. I mean, coming up with Sean Lewis and uh, I mean, everything, everything that he could do right. He has done right to this point. And obviously, he's still got to go and play games and win games. And I'm sure he's aware of that. But uh, San Diego State's pretty excited about football. And Sean Lewis is a reason. So we're excited to have him on his first his first visit to the Gwyn and Chris show. Yes, I'm still I'm still fired up about our interview with Jane Ledee yesterday. Like that just got me. I don't know. I mean, everybody does things in their in their work world that I hope everybody gets to do things in their work world that makes them just feel kind of good about what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. And every now and again, I think the same for us. You know, you get an interview and Jane Ledee comes on after that game on Tuesday night where the timing of it was fantastic. And thanks to uh, to Richard Lewis, uh, Richard Lewis. Richard Stern. Yeah, Richard, Richard Stern. Richard Stern. Sorry, Richard. I oh, didn't my know. God. I was trying to figure. Out I know him Lewis. so. I know him as Richard, and then I, <laughs> I, I compared him to the uh, character on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Richard Stern. <laughs> that's who Richard Lewis. Yeah, is. that's who was, Richard Lewis. I was is. like, I know that name, but yeah, I know that's not who yeah. we're dealing with. Thanks to Richard Stern for helping us get Jaden uh, yesterday, and uh, you know, you just do an interview and you feel good about you know him coming on and uh, and and how that went yesterday. So it was good, and look forward to tomorrow night when the Aztecs host New Mexico. Now. We were scheduled to have Jenny Kavnar on tomorrow. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. Fortunately for you guys who listen to the station, got to hear him um, with Craig and Annie earlier today. Uh, but we will catch up with her towards the end of spring training. Now that she is the everyday voice of the athletics. She has things that she has to do. Yeah, she has. To, and our showtime doesn't quite fit her daily job description. Right. You know, she's those games are going to you know be – you know, played at 12 10 our time, 1 10 their time. And, you know, that's going to fall right into our our slot time. Well, here. I think she should just ask John Fisher because, you know, he's involved with every single day to day operation well, with I, the A's. I think she would have a shot because he, he would probably just ask not to pay her on that day. Oh, yeah. That she, I don't want to get so, her in trouble. So, so. Uh, you know, okay. I, I think, no, you're he, right. I don't, right. I think, I don't right. think he would have a problem with it, but you're you know, right. I can't why do I have the feeling that? Why do I have the feeling that Jenny Kavner thinks that John Fisher is quite the owner? I think he, she thinks he's a wonderful I didn't owner. say that she thought anything. <laughs> oh, you're kind of implying. Things though, uh, kind yes, of not her. Here she did not imply anything. I am saying John Fisher uh, leaves a little bit to you the imagination. The, you remember the show, The Flintstones, when you get in the car and his feet? <laughs> I'm not backpedaling. I love that. that's, that's, I'm not backpedaling. That's gravy. Come, Come on, the, Barney Rubble. The reverse at, direction. Yeah, I'm not backpedaling. <laughs> we'll right. have Jenny on before. I'm we sure will we'll get her. We'll try to catch point. her before the regular season yeah. starts, um, where then our showtime actually falls right in line with her normal job occupation all right more serious uh things yesterday we we unfortunately had to talk about um the 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 crazy shooting that took place 
during the Super Bowl celebration for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, more information has started to trickle out. And uh, I think Scraby and I, did we talk about this on air? Or was no. it off, off? It was before the show. So, you know, I had kind of told Scraby that my feeling about this was in terms of the motive was that this was this seemed to be um a couple some 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 a disagreement that started as a disagreement that really? was my guess rather than being something that was planned and carried out yes because you know i think unfortunately in our experience with some of these planned attacks it's very rare that there's not a lot of casualties and we are fortunate that yes we're this actually ended... we're actually lucky that we didn't have as much one life I'm is not too many. Yeah, but one just life not is, as much bad things happen as could have. Right, one life is too many, but it could have been a lot more. Right, and you know, if it was a targeted situation where people were being targeted, multiple people were being targeted, um, those are the situations you seem to end up with a lot more fatalities. As it turns out, according to the authorities, um, this is stems from a, a disagreement, a dispute among several people. Now they had three or I believe three people have been taken into custody at this point. Right. Um, but that was a uh, part of uh, some of the news that, that came out today. Um, Police chief Stacy Graves said Thursday that the total number number of victims is 23, a- including Lisa Lopez Galvin, who was killed in the shooting. Graves said that the 22 people injured in the shooting ranged between the ages of eight and 47. And we know that there was what, 12 that we heard from the children's hospital that yeah. were um, that's where I mean beyond everything else I mean so many kids being in the line of fire just I mean just as heartbreaking and horrific yeah three people were detained two of whom are juveniles um, and firearms were recovered during the mayhem police said but the investigations the investigators are calling for witnesses people with cell phone footage and victims of the violence to call a dedicated hotline but um, and I and I bring this up because I think this will change the perspective moving forward in these events, right? Had this had they come out today and said that this was a planned attack, I don't know about you guys, but that scares me a lot more than a, a, a dispute between people that ended up turning into this tragedy that that happened, right? I think most people will feel more comfortable than they would have had it been a planned attack. It doesn't change the fact that we still have a, uh, well, we'll call it an anger problem then in America. I mean, if a dispute is leading to somebody opening fire in a parade, at a a parade. With a bunch of people. With a whole bunch of people around, then we're still still far away from where we need to be in this country. Um, I, I know what you're saying, Tony. Um, you know, I just hope that we, I hope that people don't shove this aside, but that'll be what ends up happening. I hate to say it. I mean, it's, it's happened in every other instance from the school shootings to malls to wherever we have these problems. Everybody talks a big game for about a day or two, and then we just move on and nothing, nothing ever changes. And you know, I, I, I have the feeling that a lot of people are going to react. Well, this was just an isolated incident. These were people that got mad at each other. It doesn't change the fact that we've got something that we've got to improve on. I, I don't know how we're going to improve on it. You know, if yeah. you bring up the word guns, then all of a sudden you're being political. And so I don't know how to bring up the word guns without sounding political. Right. But I don't see how everybody can't agree on the fact that, we don't do a good enough job of keeping guns out of the wrong hands. Now that is not attacking the amendments or any of your rights. It's just saying that guns are not right, not winding up in the right hands. If you can't agree with that, I don't know what we can agree on. Yeah. And so, you know, hopefully we can find a way to do a better job of controlling that. I'm not trying to take away everybody's right to own a gun. I'm not, I'm trying to get guns, out of the hands of people that don't, don't belong them. with them. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously these people, you get angry with somebody, you have a dispute. Okay. 
They're, they're you're, wh- a, you're a pain in the butt. You're this or that, that. Let's, you know, if you have to throw a punch, fine. But, I mean, we don't have to bring guns out and start shooting up a parade. Right. Please. There were, the, there, you know, and listen, no one is promoting any type of violence. But there was a time where disputes were settled like that. You know, a punch here, a punch there. Um, that is, we've, I think we've long passed that time. Yeah. And so, um, you know, hopefully this doesn't get just pushed to the side and that, um, you know, again, you don't, we don't want the nice things taken away from us ultimately. But, and that's what you, your great point was yesterday. Yeah. You, we uh, keep having incidents like this. We're going to have to start closing shopping malls. We're going to have to start putting, fences and gates around schools and universities and we're going to have to stop having parades all together and these are things that we enjoy that bring and, us together and it may not even be that it ends up being forced just people won't will be scared enough not right. to want to risk it at some point and so yeah. you hope that uh you hope that things can um can change a little bit moving forward um really outside of that Nothing really going on in sports today. The Padres had the day off, as we explained a little bit earlier, with Joe Musgrove, uh, or we we told as we were speaking about having Joe Musgrove off. They had an off day, so not much going down there. Uh, Genesis did a uh, launch today. We did see Tiger, but we also saw our good buddy Charlie Hoffman out there. Charlie's having a nice day. Shot a two hundred sixty nine. Tiger has actually done pretty well. Uh, Tony Tiger Woods is not on the leaderboard. But he just birdied 17, and he is at even par. This is not a bad showing for somebody that has barely played golf for the last couple of years. It is weird to see him in an outfit that doesn't have a swoosh on it. It is kind of freaking. His hat has no logo of any kind, right? Nope. Very strange. But uh, Tiger seven shots back. Patrick Cantlay's at seven under par. But yeah, I mean, I think for Tiger, he'll take an even par round. I mean, I'm sure he'll say I could have done a little better, but. That's a pretty good showing. And again, Charlie's uh, Charlie's trying to make it back-to-back weeks where he's going to be a threat. So. That's the one thing about golf, that once you see a golfer get a hot streak going, they can pro golfers can carry that for a few weeks, even a month. So I wouldn't be surprised if he had a pretty nice weekend. Yeah. Charlie? Yeah, yeah, he had a good right. tournament. So he's coming off some positive vibes, if you will. Um, uh, around sports, uh, one of the stories yesterday uh, took place actually – Behind the scenes, uh, before Ooh, I talked be- about this on the screen before the crazy. game, Isaiah Stewart uh, ended up punching Drew Ebanks. Isaiah Stewart of Detroit Pistons. Something happened; an altercation happened before they even took the floor for warmups, uh, where Isaiah Stewart ends up punching Drew uh, Eubanks of the Phoenix Suns and uh, was eventually arrested. Now, uh, what I know about Isaiah Stewart, I don't know if you guys remember this. This might have been. Two years ago in Detroit, LeBron ended up catching him with an elbow that split his head. And when he saw the blood, he just went berserk. I don't know if you remember. He was they were like he was chasing. He wasn't chasing. He was running after LeBron on the court. He had to be restrained. Really? He had to be kind of it, it took place over like about a five minute period where he was like he'd calm him down and he was back to trying to get to him. Um, so there's a pattern. Here. There's that's what I'm getting to. He he has he has been challenged guys to fights before. This one actually got to actual physicality. He was arrested later on, uh, released. But this is a story that I'm sure will develop over over the next 48 hours as the NBA weighs in on this. Can I please inv- uh, uh, you know invite or interest the NBA in uh, trying to deal with Isaiah Stewart in the same way that they dealt with Draymond Green? Draymond, Draymond had, Green is a lot higher profile guy, and everybody talks about him. Nobody talks about Isaiah Stewart. Pretty clear this guy's got a similar anger management problem, takes could, it out in all different kinds of ways. You could make the argument it, it might be worse. I mean, exactly. Uh, Tony, Draymond's I, is within uh, the confines of the game. This yes, is not a no, I fight agree with back. you. Yeah. I agree with you. I'm just saying that a lot of people will just shove it off, and it's only this it's Isaiah Stewart, whereas Draymond Green creates talk show fodder. But, you know, you still got to deal with this kind of thing. I yeah. mean, I'm surprised this doesn't happen more often in sports. You know, you have the the field of play. You've got the competition. You've got guys going at it, you know, fighting things out. And then, you know, you locker rooms in a Major League Baseball stadium are, what, three, 400 yards apart, maybe a little further. 
Locker rooms in the NBA are much closer. closer. Yeah. Uh, the NHL, they're right there. You can go, you can actually go from your bench in the NHL, skate over a couple of strides, go onto the bench of the other team, and then go through and into their locker room. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. Football, I mean, guys are, you know, going out and hammer and tong all day long. I'm shocked that you don't have more of this stuff happen it, beneath it, the stands. It, I really, I really am. It speaks to the restraint that most individuals have. It yeah. speaks to the respect of the actual, you know, game in itself to most people have. Um, this one uh, clearly got out of hand. So we'll, we'll wait to hear more on it uh, as uh, we, in these next few days, uh, there was, you know, the celebrity softball game that is coming to uh, San Diego that I am, the uh, what do you call me? The skipper of one of the teams. You can't yeah. even get me on the team. I don't know what team I have who has who's on my team, but some of the names were released today. I'm sure you guys would like to hear a little bit about that. If you want to stay tuned because we'll get to it on the other side. Sit back, relax. Four hours of Gwen and Chris coming your way. Listen to your.
All right, 2.23 is the time. Welcome back to Gwyn and Chris. Chris Hello, Tony Gwynn Jr., Matt Scraby. Together today in our Odyssey Palace studios, Tiger Woods is going to be upset. He bogeyed 18 today. So he finishes at one over par in his return to uh, competitive golf today. Tiger sits uh, eight shots off the first round lead held by Patrick Cantlay. They got a pretty good uh they got a pretty good uh, group out there. This is a good tournament like, yeah. because it's in L.A. All the people want to play it. It's it's one of those tournaments. Yeah. Charlie Hoffman, our guys there at 200 par, 69 today. Go nice get him, job, Charlie. Charlie. Staying right in the hunt. We got a good show today. Uh, Joe Musgrove, Padres pitcher and uh, San Diego's favorite son, will join us today. That's coming up at 340. So you Padre fans, make sure you're tuned in for that. Aztec fans, don't miss – Head football coach Sean Lewis, who is joining us in about 15 minutes. Speaking of Sean Lewis, he is uh, on the list of celebrities for the Padre Celebrity Softball Game, which is going to take place when, Tony? is it? It's part of the... Uh, yeah, Tony. Yeah, don't ask me. <laughs> well, you're only the manager of one <laughs> of the teams. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. just be rolling back in from Korea like the day before. I will tell you. Before. I will tell you. It's uh, scheduled from three to 3.30 to 5.30 on Sunday, March 24th. 24. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to take place on the playing field. I would like to know. It's going to be a celebrity softball game. It's part of the fa- the Padre Fan Fest. Tony is one of the uh, the managers. They got a good look. I mean, it's a good roster here. Alex Morgan, Drew Brees, Kelsey Plum, the great wrestler Rey Mysterio. That's pretty cool. I he hope he wears st- his mask. He did. He came into studio one time and wore his mask. And he scared, has to. Scared He's Rey Mysterio. <laughs> uh, Kerry Walsh, Landon Donovan, Chris Olave. There's a few names here that I'm not as familiar with. Uh, Andre Reed, I'm very familiar with, of course. And Sean Lewis, the Aztec football coach. That's right. why I brought it up. Rob Machado. Yeah. Familiar with him as well. Yeah, good, great surfer. Rashid Shahid, Saints right. wide receiver. But here's what I want to know, Tony. Yes. As manager of one of the teams, mm-hmm. you're going to need a little, little research here. My guess is that most of these are right-handed hitters. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. I just want to know that if you want a little balance in your lineup, you need a left-handed hitter in there somewhere to break it up. I'm a switchy. You're not. But I am. <laughs> I'm a switchy. So I don't know where that it came from. Switchy. Yeah, I'm not I sure meant what to that say means. switch hitter, but it didn't happen. <laughs> I'm a switchy. Yeah, I so again, I'm still trying to talk my way into this game. It's never going to work. Uh, you guys are talking to the wrong guy. Yeah. I, you're the manager. No, I am the manager. You can make roster decisions. No, I can make you can no pluck, roster you can, decisions. If Scraby and I are there, you can just pluck us out of the crowd. <laughs> I'm sure that will go over so well. <laughs> I will be wearing a hat, and you could just be like, oh, look what we have over here. I, I'm just excited that I actually might get my children to come to this because of some of the names on yeah, this they'll list. Enjoy this. Alex Morgan. Yeah. Now, Abby Dale Camper, uh, those are those are names that they yep. know. They know them. Yes, the uh, Jocelyn on the chat says my daughter is an eight year old competitive soccer player, and she would love to see Alex Morgan. Yeah. So yes. uh, now batting for Drew Brees, Matt Scraby. Can't see it. Yeah. Can't see that happening. Can't that see would either. be sweet. Not going to be happening. Uh, celebrity softball. He is... might be the one guy that I can't take out the lineup. I oh, can see here's him. A, here's I can a... see him being a little. A little, little too competitive. On oh, Drew Brees? Side. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Here's a here's a great joke from Jocelyn. I know I just brought it up. She said, so Tony so Tony is like Bowmel, no roster decisions. Yowzers. Oh. No, no, no that input in roster decisions. Cold blood. That is. Well, he's he's the enemy now. It, he is. He so. is. Who? Bob Melvin? Yeah, he coaches he's the, the Giants. Giants. He's not man, the he's enemy. The Giants. Come on, he's not an enemy. To you, maybe. Technically. Technically, he is. He's in our division. Ooh, how about this breaking news that just hit my phone? Of course, my phone's not going to go to it. But did I? I think I just saw that uh, Rob Manfred's tenure as commissioner will end in twenty twenty nine. Whoa, twenty twenty nine, and not a moment sooner. <laughs> oh, here it is. Did, did MLB I, I read... trade rumors. Oh, Rob... it's in the trade rumors, huh? Yes. Uh... That's not always official, Scrape, is it? Well, it's coming from yeah. MLB trade rumors is pretty good. It um, didn't come up at on. At, you no, know, Evan Drellich of the Athletic yeah, said that he's stepping down after it's over. Evan Drellich is no Man- Man- Manfred oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess his quote is, uh, "You can only have so much fun in one lifetime." Clay Singer, uh, we yeah. don't believe you. I have been open with them, the owners, about the fact that this is going to be my last term. 
So he's like, but in his defense, he wants to go drink in peace. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't we all? I mean, that's what I did. Well, you don't. <laughs> um, you know what's funny is is he he's actually been on the major league baseball side for decades. Like he was the lawyer, he was the the head negotiator before he became a commissioner for the owners prior to this this tenure he's had. So it, it's not he, I can see him wanting to uh, bow out and do something different, but it'll be interesting to see because those type of decisions can have an impact on the the relationship that owners have with players. You know, for a long time Bud Selig was that guy and you know they had the strike in uh, 94. I always felt that Bud Selig, and I know you know him, Tony, so I'm, I, it's not fair to me to be too critical of somebody I never met. But from afar, I always felt that he just did a lousy job for baseball. I mean, so many things happened under his watch that as a baseball fan upset me. Give, but, me, give me your list. Well, the tied all-star game just seemed to show that he did not really have a good grasp of what was going on. But more than anything, it was the cancellation of a season in 1994. I mean, I think that's got to be first and foremost on his on his resume. But a lot of people look back at Bud Selig and, you know, seem to indicate that he did a lot of good things. I mean, the interleague play came under his watch. Yep. The wild cards came under his watch. Yep. So some good things happened. I just felt like he was... He didn't have a firm grip steering the ship of Major League Baseball. But having said that, always be careful what you wish for, because it's not like Rob Manfred's come in and done any amazing things. I think, I, I, honestly, I give Theo Epstein more of the credit for some of the new rule changes and things that have come in and really helped baseball in the last couple of years. He seemed to be at the, the forefront of a lot of that. You can like, almost kind of look at commissioners like you look at presidents. Right. Because there's going to be a bunch of stuff in there that people like. There's going to be some stuff in there that people hate. Yeah. They're going to have hired some people that did some good things and they're going to have hired some people that did some things that weren't so good. Yeah. And, and you know, that's kind of you can look at Rob Manford's tenure like that, too. I mean, yes, Theo is the brain trust behind what we saw last year, but he was smart enough to hire Theo to put him on his side and to address these issues. Yeah, that's that, true. That many people we're reluctant to even dive into. So, uh, oh, okay. Scraby is, is being demonstrative right now with his signals. We're having a nice conversation here. <laughs> uh, you know, we can have this later. Sean Lewis isn't going to wait for us. Yeah, I'll hear you. we'll get to Sean. He's coming on in about 10 minutes. And uh, as such, we will step aside to make way for our first interview with the Aztecs head football coach next.
football coach. Sean Lewis will join us shortly. Meanwhile, Major League Baseball players are quite upset right now. with They're these, salty about this. These uniforms. And I can tell you, these uniforms must be bad that they actually took it to, like, the union to talk about. Like, that's how bad these things must be. Um, apparently, Nike, in their attempt to make the uniforms lighter and airier, it's a word that we use now often. Airier. Airier. All right. And um, in their attempt to do so, have made the uniforms look like replicas and they aren't as comfortable. And I'm just, and I'm giving you like the surface of the conversation here, but it's a big deal. It's such a big deal that commissioner Manfred in his, I will be stepping down speech had to actually address these. Let's play it. What people are saying um, uh, about any new initiative. Um, I think, you know, in baseball, any new initiative, there's going to be some negative feedback. Um, first and most important, uh, th these are Nike jerseys. I mean, we entered this partnership with Nike because of who they are and the kinds of products that they produce. Um, everything they've done for us so far has been absolutely 100% successful across the board. Um, the jerseys are different. They're designed to be performance wear as opposed to what has traditionally been worn. So they are going to be different, but they have been tested more extensively than any jersey in any sport. Uh, the feedback from the All-Star game last year where the jerseys were worn was uniformly positive from the players. So I think after people, you know, wear them a little bit, I think that they're, they're, they're going to be really popular. Wow. Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> Well, well, you know, that's Rob's way of spinning it, as yeah. he typically does. Um, and it sounds like the players might be out of luck on this one. They they wore these. Apparently, it sounds like they wore these uniforms during the All-Star game. There was good feedback. And the one thing Nike does is they do test their stuff. And it's not um, it's not going to be one of these things where players are going to complain and it's just going to go away. It sounds like there might be some give and Take a little bit, but if you don't feel good, you can't play good. That's I'm how sorry. I always felt. Just can't. Let's get to our phone lines. We will be. We are being joined by San Diego State head football coach Sean Lewis. This is a big gift for us, Sean. Thank you for coming on today. How are you, guys? I'm doing great. Appreciate the opportunity for jumping on with you guys. First, before we get into any football stuff, I have to ask you. Now that I found out that you, you're going to be in the softball game that I will be a head coach of, do you, <laughs> do you hit lefty? Do you hit righty? Where, where are we at? I'm a righty, and, and my strike zone is probably way too big. <laughs> That's all right. That's the beauty of softball is you can have a bigger strike zone and have a ton of success. If you get Tony as your manager, you're going to have a big leaguer to help you work on your swing. So you'll be I good. need all the help I can get, guys. <laughs> well, Coach, listen, I, we'll, we'll take care of you when, you when we get to that point. But let's talk about this football team and this upcoming year. The city is it's seemingly a, a buzz right now since you've arrived. You've already been able to bring some some – Great talent alongside uh, to, to join this team. Just talk about your expectations for this program moving forward. Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we talked about it yesterday as a team, and, you know, we've been building this culture. And for me, it's, it's about constant improvement and constant competition, right? We need to do a great job, and the staff do, has done a tremendous job of building the competitive maturity of our team, the competitive depth of our roster. And right now the guys have been working really, really hard. It, it's kind of hard to put a, an idea of where we're going to be or what we're going to look like because we haven't put any pads on right now, and we don't get a chance to do that until spring ball here coming up in March. But I'm excited with the way the guys are working and the energy that they're bringing to the building each and every single day. And, you know, with the talent that's right in our backyard, there, there's no reason why we shouldn't be competing for championships year in and year out as we get them to the building, as we develop those guys to fit our style of play. Sean, what is your style of leadership? How would you describe that? Uh, I mean, this is a, obviously a wonderful opportunity for you to be a head coach at a major Division I college football program. Sure, you had to sell yourself to the university. And so far, what you've been selling to this fan base and the people in San Diego, it seems to me they've been buying it. And I think everybody, like Tony said, is really excited. What's your? How would you describe how you went about this process? Yeah, I mean, you know, being very detail oriented, um, having processes and systems in place when, when you're running an organization as large as the football team is with 120 guys and, you know, another 100 staff members. I think you got to be very detailed and very uh, clear in, in how you communicate and what you want to get done. 
set forth clear standards, clear expectations. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think if I had to put a label on myself in any sort of way, I'd be, I would say that I'm a player's coach because I don't know what other type of coach there is, right? Like that we're here as a staff to serve our kids and it's our job to take them and get them to a place and this organization, you know, that they couldn't get to on their own. I think that's what great coaches do. And, and that's what we have to do by building up the young men that are in our organization and build trust with them to have strong bonded relationships. Right. And, and, and then because of that, then the kids will truly care about, you know, what we know and our expertise so that we can help them grow as young men and as players. Coach Lewis, I, I want to go back a little bit to the beginning before you took the job with San Diego State. Obviously, San Diego State had tremendous um, interest in you. But on the flip side of that, you would have to have interest in the, the school. What was it, aside from the weather and the city itself, uh, what was it about this school that made it attractive to you? Uh, the, the number one thing, you know, is that you need talent and you need players. And, and that's your most valuable resource that you have the, the talent pool to, to be able to, to win at a really, really high level. And, and obviously the talent and the level of high school football that's being played here in Southern California, I think is second to none. So yeah. that was really, really um, attractive to me that I could wake up in my home and, and leave bright and early and go hit 10 to 12 high schools in a day, see tremendous uh, young men, visit with great coaches, be a resource for them, and then be able to turn around and still be home to help my wife with bed and bath time. Um, you know, yeah. so that was really, really important to me, um, you know, and be there for our kids. And, and, and so also, you know, the, the winning tradition um, and, and the history of this program, to me, if you could do it once, you can do it again. And uh, obviously we've won quite a few championships here going all the way back to coach uh, Coriel and, and the air Coriel days. Right. So all that time and, and the, the product that was put in the past and what we're going to be able to build in the future by handling the present right now is something I'm really, really excited about. Sean Lewis is with us. And of course, Sean, I know you were in Colorado last year. What is your, what do you think, or is there a difference in your mind between football played say in the big 12 or the pac 12 and football played in the mountain west they, you know we've been we've been listening to this stuff for years and years and years out here that you know what uh, the power five conference is a whole nother world out there etc cetera, etc cetera. yet the aztecs have been right there competing with these guys and and winning most of their pac 12 games actually over the last 10 or 15 years so i'm assuming you don't see a big difference between the two no, I mean, I've been very fortunate in, in my time and, and being a coach to where she was all the way down to the high school level, Division Two, SDS, Group of Five, Power Five, at all the various places that I've been. And when you step in between the white line, the, the passion and the purpose that the young men play with, there's not a huge difference. And, you know, if you're aligned as a team, you've got a great plan, and, and the kids are bought into that plan, I, I think that you know, anyone can beat anyone on any given day. Uh, and so, no, there, there, there's not a huge difference when it comes to stepping in between those white lines and putting the ball down and getting after it. Head football coach Sean Lewis joins us here on Gwen and Chris. And, Sean, I, one of the things that, you know, it seems to be a difficult landscape to navigate is the NIL, the transfer portal. What about that makes it, it seems like you have you've you've had some success in those areas. What what is it about those two areas that has seemingly been a difficult landscape for some, but for yourself and others, it, it's been a little bit easier. I think it's kind of the mindset that you bring to it. We we talk to our kids all the time for any sort of skill set. It's a mindset, right? So I I don't see the the landscape of NIL and the recent changes of in the portal as as a perceived negative. To mm -hmm. me, they're opportunities. Right. And, and it's an opportunity to roll your sleeves up, go do the work that, that winning requires. And it's a part of the game now that, that you have to embrace and that you have to educate yourself on. And as fast as everything is changing, I'm very fortunate to have an unbelievable staff with a lot of different experiences from a lot of different places. And we've been able to take their ideas, my own ideas, make them our ideas so that we can be super competitive in that space. And to take that piece of the puzzle along with everything else that San Diego State has to offer and create a, you know, what we think is a remarkable experience for, for our young men to help them grow as young people, to get a tremendous degree and, and to give them a athletic experience in this competitive arena um, that is that second to none. 
Sean Lewis, football coach at San Diego State, uh, making his first stop here on Gwyn and Chris, and we're really excited to have him and uh, and have you here in San Diego, Sean. I mean, this San Diego State football program, I mean, it's coming off one bad season in terms of the record. Talk a little bit about where you felt you needed to attack in terms of, you know, skill players, line play, uh, you know, quarterbacks, wide receivers, defense. Where did you feel looking at this squad from last year? You felt you needed to do attack and recruiting, and and how do you feel you've done in accomplishing what you set out to do? Yeah, I, I think the biggest factors is always going to be for us is how can we build the most complete, big, athletic, fast, and physical, well disciplined football team that we can. Right, so we really prioritize our our height, weight, speed measurables. That, that we can verify from different sources. And I thought our staff did a great job going out and acquiring some, some great lengths and great speed, um, some mid-skill players at the linebacker and tight end position um, that are able to play sideline to sideline and, and having a backer that in today's game, you know, that is able to run, you know, through the vertical seam and having a tight end that can do lots of different multiple things, um, both run and pass. Um, so I thought we did a great job in those areas. Um, you know, obviously having a quarterback is critically important. You know, when you when you when you get on the job and you get rolling, and the guy at Enterprise tells you, Coach, we need to we need to get some quarterbacks in this thing. You know, if that guy at Enterprise knows that, then I think that tells us kind of what we need to do. Uh, um, so we were able to to you know fill those holes. We think, and again, we'll get to the field and get to work with how those guys process, and as the bullet starts flying see what we have, you know, across the board. I think there's the, the job along our trenches is never going to be done. We can mm -hmm. never be complacent in that space, right? The, the game is one up front with those bigs along the O-line and the D-line. And, um, you know, I, I never rest easy in that regard, just knowing what a premium those body types are. You know, it doesn't matter what level of the game it is, but we need to continue to develop the guys that are in our building and look for the right talent that can join us here in the future. Who would have thunk an enterprise delivering an assist uh, to, the, <laughs> to, to, the, to the San Diego State's football team. Uh, Coach, I, I, I'm interested to know, with all of the movement that's going to take place in terms of teams that are on the West Coast playing in conferences that are really uh, in the Midwest or, or back East, when you go into a, a kid's house in Southern California, what typically are the things that matter most? I know, you know, for a long time it was you wanted to be in these Pac-12 conference. You wanted to be close to home. You wanted to be on the West Coast. But has the kids' mindset kind of changed now, especially with all this movement and teams on the West Coast now really playing and being centered in the Midwest or back East? Yeah, I, mean, I think the biggest thing, right, that, that's kind of shifted is, is that there used to be this big draw to play close to home. But with all the different uh, media outlets that are there, it doesn't matter if you're near or far, mm. the games are being broadcasted and, and, and your family and your friends can watch you play, right? So the biggest thing is what's going to be the fit for that individual family? What do they covet most? And, and to me, that that's where's the best opportunity for them to grow, for them to develop, and for them to get the exposure and the production that they want to ultimately pursue their dreams uh, of playing in the NFL, right? Like those are the guys that we want to hunt. Those are the guys that we want to be after that have high dreams, high aspirations, that want to be highly productive and, and maximize their opportunities. So, you know, we're, we're talking to families about that, how, you know, their skill set, their character makeup is a great fit for our brand of football. And that's going to lead to, you know, great results both on and off the field, but unbelievable production that's undeniable that NFL scouts have to go see and so that we can continue to do a great job of developing those pros here on the Mesa and helping them achieve their, their dreams and their goals. Sean, thanks for the time. We've really enjoyed it. I want to throw one more at you real quick. Uh, just your thought on the state of college football. Tony mentioned the conference realignments, et cetera. Do you like the way the sport is headed right now or, or are some things you're concerned with? Uh, I mean, again, it's constantly evolving, right? I, I think there, there's some great things that are happening for the, the players and the opportunities that are out there. I, I think there's some ways that we can modify it and, and make it better so that there can be a little bit more stability so that yeah. not every single time this portal window opens, you know, you're it's unrestricted free agency across the board. But uh, again, there, there should be freedom. There should be flexibility. There should be the, the availability for choice. Um, but I think if we can do a better job of just, you know, putting a little bit more parameters in place. So it's not just open season year round. Coach Lewis, uh, we super appreciate you coming on and, so, and spending some time. Scrape you over here and line him up against me. I'm ready to one through a wall <laughs> after, cool. after this interview. <laughs> I'm ready. Coach, we appreciate you coming on. I'll see you out on the baseball diamond or the softball diamond, however you want to put it.
but this city is extremely excited about you and this and this program and uh, we'll be we'll be back behind you 100 percent guys appreciate it go aztecs thanks Sean. sean lewis head coach of the san Diego state aztecs football squad don't you think it'd be kind of fun to just line you scrape and i up right here and just Go hut hut. It's all fun until a scrape, that, it's all fun until a scrape decides to run back at you at full yeah. tilt. Because then yeah. I don't I don't know, man. You know I am Kevin O'Connor's <laughs> former high school teammate. I know, but what if I pancake him in the corner? There's zero I, chance I, of if that. You, oh, 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 oh. Zero. <laughs> if, you, if you pancake Scravy, first of all, I'd have to get the phone call, phone out so we could get this on film. But that would be epic. Scraby, yeah. you would never be able to live that down yeah, if you let Chris pancake. Well, down. it wouldn't happen. So oh, that, it, he seems pretty confident happen. about that. Yeah, I mean, I think he, could, he could probably be pretty confident about because honestly, I don't even know how to pancake somebody. <laughs> you so know, I wouldn't even know what the first thing to do. I so. may have uh, lost a lot of weight due to SD fat loss, but that doesn't mean I haven't built any muscle, baby. Uh, plus, you, I could run you over. Proven that you yeah, got sure that you dog could. in you a little bit too. Run, run. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Sean Lewis just got me in the mood to hit somebody. I, I agree. I, I agree. Honest with it. He's... I, I need his energy. Yeah, I need it. What is 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 Manfred is just spilling all kinds of stuff. I just saw this come across. MLB wants December free agency. First of all, isn't it free agency in December? I mean, is it just one in that period? That oh, window? this is the new ta- signing period. Yes, yeah. we'll have to we we'll have to kind of figure that out a little bit. But that's. The, uh, Sean Lewis, man, he he definitely he seems like the type of guy that has been waiting for this opportunity and is more than ready. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I, again, I I really credit you know JD Wicker. I yeah. mean, what happens from here, we don't know. Hopefully, they'll come out. I mean, you got to give the guy a little time, right? I mean, a lot of fans are going to want to go eleven and one right away. That'd be awesome, but you got to give the guy a little time to build his program up. But I, I, I can't imagine he's not going to be successful here. And, you know, for J.D. Wicker, I think, to go out an, a, under pressure circumstances. I mean, this is such a key hire. It is. And it just sounds like he's really hit a home this, run with this. This is a different hire than the, the past couple I think uh, so. Um, head coach hirings in football from the football program because you got just the new moved stadium. Into, you just you moved cannot, into a new stadium. Yes, right. You cannot uh, squander this opportunity. And, you know, unfortunately for Brady Hoke, the first couple of years of the new stadium really wasn't successful. That's right. The way they certainly expected the, the, it to be. Is just think about it. Like a lot of times the timing is 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 important, right? And, and I bring this up because I, I think it has some kind of it, it kind of runs parallel, right? The Padres, when they got Petco, they had a season that propelled them to get Petco. Right. Whereas and then, didn't they win the division the first couple of years they were at Petco? They did, right? They did. So they, they, they got they it had off some a good, good season, start. right? Yeah. Um, the Aztecs had some good seasons, uh, and, and fans got behind it. That led to the vote that pushed across the uh, the stadium, right? Right. But to follow that, you got it. You you want to have some good seasons in it because you, as we saw, the attendance fell drastically last year, and you know I think. Obviously, when you move into a new stadium, a new a new arena, whatever it may be, you want to have some success early. And as you mentioned, the first two years didn't quite reach the bar that that everybody was hoping. Typical luck for San Diego State and their you know their football program. The best two seasons they had came when they were playing in Carson. That's right. That's and, right. You know, not even playing in town because of the building of the stadium and COVID and all of these things happening. You know that they had two great years in a row. Nobody there, saw it. That nobody saw it. Real quick, I just want to mention that Michael is watching YouTube while sitting in the dentist chair for his biannual teeth cleaning. Say hello to my dental hygienist. Hello, hello dental, dental hygienist. hygienist. Steve, take it, take take it easy on Michael Steve. out there. The or show Steve. goes everywhere. Take it easy on Steve out there. It's his name's Michael. Oh, Michael. you did have it right. I had it oh, wrong. you said it right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Michael. All right, Scraby, get over take here and line up, Mike. and we'll see if you make it through to the next segment. Oh. Yeah, let's see if you <laughs> make it through. Daily Gambit on the way.
Suggested that we come back to the program and uh, get a shot of Scraby laying in a heap in the corner over there after I pancaked him. He jumped up and just about fought me right here on that idea. My man. Uh, he is, he's really geeked up for this idea. Now Adam Klug is getting into it. I'm like scared for you now. You're scared for me? No, nah, don't be scared for me. I, I seem to remember a time when I said I could eat a Thai 10 and immediately we had this plan for Thursday somehow. Yeah, we did. We so, did. All right, so what do you want to plan? Well, I mean, let's 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 talk this oh, out. What do you want what do you want to actually do? You want to take you want to take a camera crew I out to San Diego State? You want to get some helmets and pads, mm -hmm. and you want you and I to line up across from each other and just basically wrestle it out. No, for a no, no. Here two. it is. Here I, it is. I don't want to see you guys do the Oklahoma drill. I really That's don't. exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. The Oklahoma drill. I did. What is that one where you have to run full speed? Yeah, each other? you guys lay about ten yards apart. Nah, yes. that's yeah, nah, I don't want to see you stupid. do that. I, I, I love. I, I miss playing football more. I, than anything I will in this say world. this: unlike the tie ten challenge. When Scraby opened his mouth and we started honing in on it, yeah, he immediately was backpedaling from that point. Right. He wants all the smoke on this one. Let's yeah. go. He's 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 he thinks he's just gonna destroy me. I mean, have you seen how big and chunky I can be? Have you seen how big and chunky I can be? I have. I mean, SD Fat Loss has done a phenomenal job for both of us. Oh, and you know what? Lord. Yeah, it, it, they definitely have. And you know what's even worse for you, Chris, is that I'm lighter, so I'm moving faster. Uh, well, yeah, that's so what I won't be able to catch you? That's not necessarily no, true. There's more momentum and force behind Just it. Just because you have lost does not automatically mean that you will be moving faster. Here's the problem that you're going to have, Scraby, is that I have gigantic thighs you and do. calves you do. and legs. You His do. lower that half is, is dominating you, It is going to be difficult <laughs> to move me off of that perch. That is true. And I, I know say. it's going to be difficult for me to move he you. He's Trevor I, Hoffman like calves. I honestly feel like if you and I, you know, bring the camera, and I know everybody's going to want us to do this, so we're going to probably have to figure out a way to do this. <laughs> But I, I, I do want the pads and the helmet, and I think San Diego State ought to get in on it. I think but they're not going to want the liability. I was just getting ready to say it. Man. Well, we'll sign a waiver, all right? They're we'll like, sign yeah. a waiver. We'll sign a waiver. But but I really think it's going to be pretty much a stalemate. I don't think a whole lot's going to really happen. I, I think it's going to be kind of dull footage. He's talking himself into this. <laughs> talking myself into what? I mean, yeah, I, mean I said this. I'd pancake you. I'm not going to pancake you. You're not going to pancake me? Well, you might pancake me, but I don't think you will. So this you is never know. You never know. See, Remember, this is I, I, this is sometimes these type of moments where I think of my father, and you probably think, "Why are you thinking about your father in this?" He used to tell me all the time, "You know what, son? Sometimes you just keep your mouth shut and, <laughs> and, observe. <laughs> and, and observe, and, and, it, and it, it'll keep you out of it'll keep you out of harm's way a lot of times." Yeah, it's good advice. Thai food. Now we're about to line up ten yards and crack each I other. I did. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I did not agree. <laughs> I want, to line up, I want to line up face to face. <laughs> mano a mano. Oh, I got my I got my jab ready. Do you, oh, uh! do you still? You, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh! I, first of all, I just thought of this. I don't think you should do this. Why? Your shoulder. I'm that, getting surgery on it that, soon, that, so yeah. So we got to wait till after surgery. No, 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 no. I want well, to damage it now. Nah, if we're gonna man. damage it. You ain't for the. You ain't for to get one of these and your whole rotator cuff out come out of spot it's already out of spot oh man so they're gonna put it back into spot i am going to do my best to push you guys away from this challenge right here i don't think you guys oh my it. goodness adam just had an amazing idea oh man we know a football coach that works on this very station brayden soprano mm. he i'm not wearing high school <laughs> it's the same thing <laughs> It's the same thing. You want at least college level gear. Uh, here's a question from Welsh Fryer. He is tuning in from Wales saying, speaking of pancakes, do you guys celebrate Pancake Day over in America? We do have I a pancake day. We do have day. a pancake day. Yes, do? we do. Yeah, we definitely do. Oh, we got a day for every day. In on that. No, yeah. we have a pancake day, and I believe one year someone, uh, one of the pancake restaurants brought a bunch of pancakes in, and they were like the yep. manhole cover. Yeah. And I ate like a pound and a half of pancakes. Who doesn't love pancakes? It's pretty good. Great stuff. Pretty good. I mean, are you a um, butter? Yeah. Maple syrup guy? Do you like yeah. strawberries? On what? I don't, I don't need maple syrup. I just need syrup. Isn't all syrup maple syrup? I thought I'm, all talk, syrup I'm was talking maple about syrup. like the the a real maple syrup. That's just what you referred to. 
Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not in the Gwyn household where we go to our tr- our syrup no, tree in oh, the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I meant. Scraby. Send Michaela out there to drain the tree. Trey's like, syrup. Dad, there's no more syrup <laughs> in the syrup tree. That's not what I was referring to. <laughs> the syrup tree what is, is the, out. Uh, it's, it's, they, they've changed the name of the uh, popular... Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's called. Uh, is it the it, mil- it, Pearl Mill or? Yeah. Uh, yes. 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 Right? So let me look that up because it's not. It used to be Aunt Jemima, and now it's something right. else. Um, I'm not. I'm not referring to that stuff. I'm referring to like the real maple syrup. Pearl milling. Yeah. Pearl milling. Oh yeah, the real maple syrup. I actually don't really. I'm not like. a big fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's because it's, you're it's to. natural. <laughs> that's probably why I don't like it. No, you're right. Well, Sean Lewis has gotten us all geeked up, so uh, we're ready to run through a wall. Unfortunately. I announced that I want to run through Scraby instead. We'll see where this. You goes. actually said you want to pancake him. Actually, no. Which, I just said it would be hilarious, which would be hilarious him. to oh, see one of his the great feet bits of footage of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't happen. <laughs> Wouldn't. I would happen. honestly need to spend some time with a couple of offensive linemen so I could get a couple of tricks of how to pancake. I, I really don't speaking even know what of, to do. Speaking of football, yes. And straight, unfortunately, Chris, I don't think you'll have any feels towards this, but I know Scraby will. Did you see the trailer for College Football 25? You know, I didn't get to watch it yet, oh, but my it looks sweet. It looks sweet. I'm going well, to watch to, it. it. To be fair, there's no graphic actual video. It's just like the it's uniforms. A guy, it's just a guy, and they kind of show some of the renderings of like, they're not renderings, but some of the, the footage of how they are putting together the, the video game. I'm so excited about it. Do we know if... Because for a long time they didn't do it because of the image and likeness, right? Do we know if players assume, are making money off of this? I would assume so. Because they have to have every roster, right? Yeah. That's insane. I don't know what that looks like in terms of what kind of money they're getting, but I that was reason why it that shut was, down. That all started in the first place, right. wasn't it? it? Yeah, I think it was Ed O'Bannon was the one. Ed his, O'Bannon. His, and, his, his uh, lawsuit and, ended up. And you know who uh, who advised him on that? Who's that? Sonny Vaccaro, the ah. guy who they did the movie Air about. Yeah, Sonny I need to watch would, because Sonny used to come movie. on our Sonny used to come on our show regularly back in the day. He's he's in San Diego and he used to, he told me when that whole suit was starting. He said they're going to change everything. This was ten years, fifteen years ago. He Sonny McGarrett was, right. was always at the forefront of saying this is going to change everything. Yeah, he, was right. <laughs> he was right. He was right. Yeah, Sonny, God love you, Sonny. All right, we're going to get into our daily gambit. Some winners and losers out there. And uh, we'll see if DraftKings or FanDuel want to post odds on who's going to pancake who and Chris versus Scrape. Minus 1,000 over here. All right, let's just get to it. Do you like money? I think about money a lot. Do you like money without doing anything? Uh, duh, winning. Do you want to make money while watching sports? I think Washington is immortal luck. Washington, woohoo! If you answered yes, this is your segment. Just don't blame us when you lose. Nothing is ever your fault. It's your game. Take it. Gwen and Chris go through the top bets of the day in The Daily Gambit on 97.3 The Fan. Daily Gambit is our daily sports betting segment here on Gwen and Chris. Please, everybody, gamble responsibly. I don't have any bets to review, but Chris does have some that we're going to we're gonna make. Uh, the only story I want to bring to this is that a lot of people are betting on Tiger Woods to win the Genesis Open. Which he closed at one twenty-five to one. That's all. Yeah, but that's good odds. Or like that's pretty good odds. One hundred twenty-five no, to one. Oh no, one hundred. Oh okay. So if you bet ten dollars, you'd win twelve hundred. Yes. Yeah. 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 He he his odds are good enough that people are betting on it, but they're such long odds that they're probably not going to win because he has to win the tournament for it. But it's a pretty his gar- He has a tournament leading eight percent of the tickets at Bet MGM which saw a notable uptick in overall wagers. ESPN Bet has 6.5% of its bets on uh, Tiger, trailing only Scotty Scheffler. So the Tiger Woods effect is real. It's very real. Oh, I bet you the uh, – It's always been. As long as he makes it to the weekend, I mean yeah. the uh... – There's odds on that too. Well, he's he... not, right now I don't think he'll make it to the weekend. He's a little lower on the uh, leaderboard than halfway, so – might have to pick it up a little bit tomorrow, but that'll be a huge deal for golf because the ratings will go way up if he plays on the weekend. His um, 
I guess FanDuel offered some sort of profit boost. You can get a plus 130 on Tiger to make the cut. So, I mean, that's 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 big movement for betting. 8% people are betting on a guy who's probably not going to win. That's wild. Yes, but, that's, that but is, that is his draw, that he elicits that kind of... And those 8%, thought. probably the only golfer they know is Tiger Woods. That's also, well, that's I, also I, probably that, true. If I said that, you'd be like, where's your proof? Where is your proof, Chris? He said probably. He didn't say it was a definite oh, okay. thing. He All said right. it's probably the only one they know. I, I don't know. Sean Lewis just makes me want to the fight. The problem is for you, Scrape, is you say things like, it's 100% fact. And then we go, and then you go, well, wait, hold on, let me check. <laughs> Fine. I walked right into this. Use the word probably. It'll get you out of it, some problems. It will. It, in the, in it the certainly will. Chris, what do you got? I got a, I got a few things for tonight. Uh, most notably, one of the bigger stories in sports tonight, Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Mm, the University of Iowa needs to score eight points tonight to break the all-time scoring record for NCAA women's basketball, beating out uh, your fellow uh, Powegian, Kelsey Plum, who has held the record for some time now. She'll also be in softball game. Yes, she will. But uh, Caitlin Clark apparently has never scored fewer than eight points in a game. So she's like the LeBron of college basketball. Pretty much automatic that she's going to get the record tonight. Iowa is facing Michigan. And uh, I asked you guys what her over under for the game. This is pretty ridiculous total 36 and a half points for this game tonight against Michigan. Do you want to bet over or under? Scraby, you go first. Oh, man. Caitlin Clark, 36 and a half is the over under. You know, I watched this game. Was it on Saturday that this, this game against Wisconsin, Iowa, Wisconsin? I think it was Saturday. I, so I watched the fourth quarter waiting for her to break it, and then she didn't score a point in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Don't watch then. This I, week. I'm going to say that she probably scores like 32. So I'm going to say under. Under. I'm going to say that she's a, a showman. And uh, piles it on tonight. They're at home. She'll break the record early and keep on scoring. I'll say over. Tony. I'm going to say under. Also she'll, under. Yeah. She'll break the record, but under. 36 and a half points. All right. We'll see if Caitlin Clark. Well, we're pretty sure she'll break the record tonight. Uh, some other college basketball on tap tonight. How far has UCLA fallen in basketball? The Bruins are home tonight to Colorado. Colorado is favored by two points. At Pauley Pavilion, there used to be a time way back when when UCLA never even lost a game at Pauley Pavilion. But uh, I think the Bruins are one of the most disappointing teams in college basketball this year. Uh, I'll go first here, and I'm going to take Colorado to just keep UCLA scuffling. I'll give uh, give the two points. Tony? Yep. Uh, I'm also take the bolt the team from Boulder. The Buffaloes. Scrabby, who do you like here? Um... I'm going to go the other way and go UCLA. Going to take UCLA for Dave Marcus. I saw Dave Marcus today. Oh, yeah, so did I. Dave Marcus was running around the studio. By the way, Dave Marcus, luckiest guy in the uh, building. What? He Just... got two of the four winners in the uh, Super Bowl pool. Oh, he did. He sure did. He did. He, did. he, sure he cashed did. in. He's getting to go to the Billy Joel concert, and I think he's also getting to go to, I think it's SeaWorld or Disneyland. Oh, the oh yeah, they were both on the board. I mean, he scored... I tried to talk him out of the Billy Joel tickets he was having. He didn't bite. Well, I no. think he should give me the Disneyland tickets because he's going to be too busy. So, well, yeah. he's not going to give them to you. Well, he, this <laughs> is that was the him. most fun he's had because, as Chris said, UCLA is pretty trash this year. That's his team he roots for. Yeah, and so he, even though he went to San Diego State, even though he went to San Diego State, <laughs> you would never know. Dave Marcus, kind of an odd fellow. Oh, it's almost but time. That's for... what we love about him, and we are we going to get to our get, day 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 day. Day. We've, we've been discussing, and I think he's in, so we got to confirm that. Yes. Right. Well, you... But I need more. Sorry, Chris. I need more from from Dave. I need some more uh, secret stories yeah. from Jesse and Tony on Dave the road. Is, uh, Dave is Dave is a a very safe character, if you know what I mean. He's not going to risk anything. I'm not asking him for to say anything bad. Yeah, I'm just I'm saying, just like, you, if he deems it as possibly a risk, you're not getting it. What if he has his own daily gripe about you guys? That would actually be kind of funny. Okay. Maybe we'll do that. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. Speaking of the daily gripe, that's what wraps up the Scraby Con uh, Chronicles. Yes. Let's get underway at 6 o'clock. Last, last night was a good one. After our show here. Uh, all right. We got some uh, Division One college basketball in town tonight, guys. 
Uh, both USD and UCSD are playing at home. So if you're a college basketball fan, you might want to get out there. Toreros are favored by six and a half over Portland, mm. Tony. Toreros at home. Give me the Toreros. Toreros. You've been betting on the Toreros more, I have. Than, I've, uh, more than you used to. Brock Ungridge has softened my stance on All right. USD. Mm, Very good. Scraby, what do you like here? Uh, Port, the Portland Pilots are not very good. I'm going to go USD. USD? Uh, USD's played very well at home this year, but I don't think they're good enough to warrant laying seven. six and a half points. Yeah. So I will take Portland plus the six and a half. Uh, the other game, UC San Diego, five and a half over UC Santa Barbara. Scraby, you lead off here. I mean, UCSC has been really good this year. They have. UCSB is always that team that I'm like, oh, yeah, they are in. They have a basketball team when they hit the <laughs> oh, yeah. Gauchos. They have a basketball team. Uh, but I'm going to go UCSD. UCSD. Yep. I will also go UCSD. They've impressed me. I mean, I still go back to them almost beating the Aztecs. Uh, Tony? UCSD. Yeah, if they could beat, almost beat the Aztecs, they ought to be able to beat yeah. UCSD. Yeah. SB. Yeah, I'm going with uh, SD. All right, one more. Uh, NBA's top team in the West, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota. Nine and a half points over Portland tonight at Portland. Uh, I'm first here. Timberwolves are ahead of the Clippers. They're ahead of Oklahoma City. They're ahead of Denver. Way ahead of your guys. They're ahead of everybody. Are you talking about my guys? Your guys, your Lakers. Portland's been terrible this year, but I hate giving nine and a half points on the road. I'm going to take Port. I'm going to take Portland in college basketball. I'm going to take Portland in, in the NBA. Portland plus the points. Uh, Tony, how many points? Nine and a half. Have you watched Minnesota play this year? I've seen them play some really good games. They beat Denver, and I've seen them play some bad games. They lost to Chicago. Kevin Garnett. So I'm not sure about this team yet. Kevin Garnett said something that uh, that kind of. At first, I was like, nah, and then I thought about it might be. He said that Anthony Edwards reminds him of a young Michael Jordan, the 84 Jordan. Wow. Jeez. And I took was him like, a few years to get to this it, point. It, it took, but that's what, that's what, but again, that's what separated Michael is he did that his rookie season. But that's who he said it reminded him of the, some of the things that Anthony Edwards says. And when you, if you've watched Anthony, there's some, there's something to that. I will say, to answer your question, That's I'm taking uh, Minnesota. Taking Minnesota. Scraby, after that. Uh, is DeAndre Ayton stuck at home this time, or is he going to make I don't it know. The is there a blizzard there again? Because you know <laughs> he's, he's going to take the day off. Uh, I'm going to go T-Wolves. He must have been one of the worst acquisitions of all time by Portland. I don't know what they were thinking there. I don't know. Some would say uh, Sam Bowie was when they decided to pass up Mr. You know what? They're Jeffrey never going to live that one down. <laughs> They'll never, never live that one down. <laughs> They're never going to all right, uh, that's our uh, our bets for today. We'll take a quick time out. A lot more Gwen and Chris ahead, including in about 20 minutes, Joe Musgrove. No, no, Joe, coming on the program. We'll talk to him from uh, Padre Spring Training. Stick around for that. Coming up soon, traffic before anything else on Gwen and Chris. From the night.
I almost came on this segment and said the wrong thing. Because Joe Musgrove is actually coming on next segment, not this segment. Right. Uh, Scraby. Yes, sir. We were talking uh, about Tiger Woods earlier. He Mm -hmm, looks weird mm -hmm. without a swoosh anywhere Mm -hmm. to be seen. He's got a kind of ferocious looking tiger. Uh, Is that what that is? Oh, yeah. Tiger. I, I can't see it. I that wasn't. Oh, I looked at Tony it. like his name is Tiger. His clothes. I, 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 I understand that part. I'm talking about in terms of this new uh, clothing. I think it's tailor made. That's doing it. Correct. It is tailor made. Sun day. And yes. I said that the way I did on purpose because it's not one word. It's two words. And you have found out why what this is all about i really wanted to know because i feel like it makes no sense to name it sun space day space red uh and so i went to a a business website and they chose they chose (laughs) they chose to split the phrase up because uh they think okay splitting the word into sun space day marks the brand's wider appeal as a lifestyle brand not limiting it to a singular day Ah, so it's not because there's someone who has like a trademark on it. It's not because of anything like that. I make some sense. No, I, 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 I do know some people who think they can only wear it on Sunday. Like it's a it's Sunday red. Like I can't. They need help. Thank goodness. Scraby explained all that. I can see people <laughs> driving along the eight or the 15 happy in the knowledge that they now know that. Don't you think that his it's more recognizable if it's Sunday red instead of sun day red? I don't know. I think it matters that it's Tiger Woods and people will wear it just because of that. Ding, 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 ding. I think they should have called me before they decided on this name. You think everybody should call you before they make decisions like that? I think it's weird. I, I can't believe you guys don't think it's weird. Nope. Don't I think really it's don't weird, have Scrape. a feeling one way or another <laughs> about it. All exactly. Right. Sorry to say. Okay. Well, that's that's the uh, story behind it. Um, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's just... It's, <laughs> it's just it's just Woo-hoo-hoo! weird. It's just weird to see him not wearing Nike, and then they flip over to to Rory, your guy. Mm-hmm. He's got he's got Nike he's Nike, Nike stuff up. on. So yeah, I uh, Nike. I mean, they only make the apparel now. So I, okay, so they don't... are still making apparel. They are still making apparel. They're not making any of the clubs or the balls or anything like that anymore. Let me go back to that kind of tidbit i that little bomb i threw in about uh free agency december oh read yes you, the read period. you a little bit about it baseball baseball yeah rob, rob manfred who also revealed that he will not seek a new term after 20 after his 2029 contract ends uh he also said on thursday that so the he's least, a lame duck commissioner for the next five, five years. years why are you telling us this now <laughs> lame duck yeah you know typically lame duck is like same year as right but he's got a five-year staying five years pe- staying power on yeah. this uh rob manford revealed on thursday that the league prefers a free agent pe- free agency period in december that contains two weeks of flurried activity and includes a deadline according to alex spear of boston globe and this is a quote from manford we would prefer to have a free agent signing free agency signing period ideally in december with a deadline. However, the commissioner noted, noted that the league made proposals regarding free agency deadlines to Major League Baseball Players Association, and as I can imagine, they were not received well. Now, from a player standpoint, would you want to be confined to two weeks in which you could sign a contract, or would you rather have an entire offseason to work with? And I think that is how that is initially going to be received. Now, more details can be added. You could, you know, throw some different things in there, but I imagine that that would be a, a hard sell based on the fact that they've had it this way, and it just seems like the better way for the player. Doesn't baseball have to do a better job of getting itself on the front page during the off season? I would, off football, I, I would say so. I mean, football's unbelievable. I mean, really. I mean, the the Super Bowl happens. And the first thing is everybody's draft thing, you know, draft picks come out and who's going to draft where and, you know, field Yates and all of these ESPN I, experts. All, I mean, it's all about the draft. Then it's going to be about free agency. Then it's going to be about 
signing guys and trading guys, and then all of it, it it'll be in it's a, a, mach- be it's in a, a machine. At, it's a it's machine at absolute, this point. Right. It's an absolute machine. And I don't know that baseball can take anything away from that, but I think baseball's they got to figure out the best way to do their free agency in terms of what's best for baseball. And if that's not quite best for the players, I, I think they may have to, they may have to just say, take that one you know, as a loss leader. Cause I think what's best for baseball is to have, you know, baseball on the front page more often other than Juan Soto being traded. What else has been, you know, I mean, your 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 two premier free agents are still free agents right now. That's right, Blake I mean, Snell and, and Bellinger. Yeah, right now they're they're still free agents. Still free agents. I, I don't know that that part. It's good for them. Don't get me wrong. It's good for. I don't know that that part is necessarily good for baseball, right? Because you know, just if when you compare the two, the other two sports in in basketball and football, when you get to the this. They're off season period. There's some dead time, but then you got it's almost like a build up. You have the you remember you see the running clock on the bottom on the bottom line about right. when people can start signing. Stuff gets leaked out, and it's like kind of a you know a dance, and then a boom, a flurry of activity over a week or two, and then it slows down again. But baseball doesn't really have that, and so it, it's something that I'm sure we'll hear more and more of as. We get closer to that time frame because right now I don't think it's going to happen, but I would expect to hear this conversation continue to pop up, especially if they're going to have more and more free agencies like this one that we saw this year. I I read somewhere that uh, as of right now, Tony, half the guys, half that were free agents heading into this off season are still Still free free agents. agents. I saw that too. Yeah. It's like not even a month. Well, I mean, it's less than a week before so, I mean, the first game the, of spring training. I know Scraby wants us Crazy. to get the break, so I just got to get this last point. And the argument uh, that could go against the players is that, well, you have all this time now, and guys, half of the people still haven't signed. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I would love to get some of the players' perspective on that. All right, let's get to break. When we come back, Joe Musgrove. Unfortunately, we got him a little earlier. I can't ask him about it this time around, but you'll get to hear that interview next here on Gwen and Chris. Gambling problem.
Hey, if you love Mediterranean food like we do, try Spiro's Authentic Mediterranean Cuisine in Coronado or La Jolla. For dining or takeout options, always a good idea. Visit SpirosCuisine.com. Uh, coming up on our interview with Joe Musgrove. No, no, Joe. You know, I was thinking he had kind of a disappointing season last year, Tony. <laughs> I until said this I, the other day. I until said, I looked up his stats. That's what, exactly what I said. He had a great year. It wasn't I thought he had a disappointing season. I just thought I mean, he was. He felt like he was hurt a lot. Yeah. I mean, he only pitched 97 innings. My guy lost two games. Three. He was 10 was and ten three. three. I thought it was 10 and two. Yeah, 10 and three with a 3.05. Whip was 1.14. 97 strikeouts and 97 in the third innings. I mean, he had a really, really good year. But I'm sure for him, you know, again, he wants to be healthier this year. And uh, to that end, we got caught up with Joe at spring training in Peoria and uh, talked about how he's feeling and what he's thinking about this season. And you know that he told us some good stuff. So uh, enjoy. But first, grab yourself a little traffic. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Problems along the 5 on the northbound side just past Del Mar Heights Road. Collision over the right shoulder. Looks like some wood debris on the Carmel Valley Road off ramp southbound 5. Further south on the 5 before Sea World Drive. An accident blocking one of the right lanes. Several vehicles involved. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwen and Chris. San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Joining us is uh, San Diego's favorite, I think. Joe Musgrove uh, joins us here on Gwen and Chris. Joe, uh, first, man, how are you? How's... The beginning of spring training, it all starts again. It's been good, man. Uh, to be honest, uh, the biggest bummer for me living, losing San Di- or leaving San Diego is not having the San Diego radio anymore, man. I became a big fan <laughs> of, of your show in the morning broadcast. So, uh, you know, I'm missing 97.3, actually. Come on now. You can still uh, go online. Watch <laughs> us on YouTube, yeah, I, know, I expect. Right? I got to put a little more work in. Here. Yeah, you got to put a little work in. Uh, Joe, I mean, this was a, a little bit different off season for you, man. You, you, you had to, um, get the body in order before I'm assuming starting your, your, your prog, your progression to get to this point. Um, right. how, how are you feeling? Um, and, and what, what was differing, uh, different about this off season compared to, to past off seasons? Yeah, a lot of things. I mean, first off, I had a little more time. Um, you know, starting the off season a little bit sooner. One, because, you know, obviously not making the playoffs, you, you wrap up at the start of October. But, uh, you know, the last month and a half of the season for me was spent on the IL. And, um, you know, we were back and forth between trying to build back up or just shutting down and starting the off season. Um, you know, our, our place in the rankings was kind of dictating a lot of that. And going 16 and two down the stretch kind of put a little pressure on us to, to speed things up a little bit. Should we make it in, you know, I wanted to have a chance to throw. Um, so a little bit of that, but you know, ultimately I got to start some of the off season, you know, recovery work and stuff down that last, you know, month of the season or so last year. So going into the start of the official off season, I, I was actually in a pretty decent spot. Um, but yeah, like you said, a lot more body work and uh, maintenance stuff to kind of get me back to a, uh, to a level playing field before I go into the off season and start to build back up. So um, I can honestly say that, you know, this past week has been the best that I've felt all off season. Um, and I feel like I'm starting to peak at the right times here. Do you still have to uh, prove anything to yourself and to, uh, or this, you know, the team, the coaches that, you know, what's going to let them know, let you know that you are going to be ready to go 100% on opening day. Yeah. You know, I've got my check boxes that I like to hit. Um, you know, along the way in the course of spring training, but, you know, you really try to just set your sights on one at a time. And for me, it's a, it's a daily, it's a daily thing, you know, just try to get your body feeling good by the end of each day and, and leave in there feeling like it'd be ready to come in the next day. So, um, like I said, I have these few things that I like to hit along the way, but I'm really trying to take it day at a time and just, you know, follow what the, the trainers and, and our PT staff have given me. Joe Musgrove joins us. One of the lead dogs in this rotation at the Padres, We'll go into the 2024 season with it. And Joe, I'm interested to, to hear you hear your take on this. I, I know when pitchers and catchers reported, you had your kind of scrum with the media and you spoke about establishing an identity um, as a starting pitcher on, on this ball club. Where what what is your part in creating that identity And, you know, how long does it take for a team to kind of figure out what their identity is going to be? 
I think ultimately you find it through through playing and through winning. Um, but, you know, setting the tone early in camp with the expectations of how we're going to carry ourselves as a staff. I mean, me and Ruben have this talk a lot, but we're firm believers that starting rotation sets the tone for everything. You know, we got yeah. the ball, we control yeah. the pace of the game. Um, you know, we're in control out there. So, um, you know, we want to be known as a, as a relentless staff, you know, somebody that's not going to give in regardless of the scenario, regardless of the score. Um, you know, if you got the ball and you're on that mound, you're giving it everything you have until they take it from you. Um, you know, so some of those things are, are talked about a little bit as far as what we expect and the effort level that's going into things. But a lot of the, the culture and stuff that everyone talks about, you know, that stuff is, is found through winning and, and through experiences you have throughout the course of the season. But, um, you know, it's never too early to start implementing some of those things and just talking out loud about some of the, you know, some of the approaches that you want to take towards your game and how you want your team to look on the field. Joe, uh, we obviously follow everything that happens during the off season. The fans uh, follow it closely, but they're not as probably as big of fans as the actual players that are on the team. I mean, you you're certainly reading oh, yeah. and following everything that's happening. And Juan Soto's traded, and a bunch of guys are coming in. And free agency this year is a little different than last year. What's what's your overall reaction to what the Padres have done so far this off season, and uh, how do you think it's all going to benefit this year's club? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's never easy losing a, a generational talent type player in Soto, but um, you know, you look at the pieces we get in return for him and what it does for our team moving forward. I think it puts us in a better spot, um, you know, as a group and as a team. You know, with the arms we got in return, pitching was going to be the biggest concern going into the off season for us. Um, you know, so we answered a lot of those questions with some of the arms we got back. You know, we got a little bit of experience. And then uh, some really good, talented young arms that we expect to be big pieces for us. So, um, like I said, it's not easy to lose guys like Soto and the guys consistent as Grish is in the outfield. But when you look at what it does for our team and our rotation, I think it puts us in a real good spot. We got some really good depth in our bullpen now. Um, you know, still a few pieces that I think we're we're short on. But you know, I know AJ and you guys know him well. Um, you know, he's always got something up his sleeve, and I know he's not walking into this thing knowing that there's there's gaps in the you know, in the roster that need to be filled without a plan. So I think uh, we just kind of trust in him. Joe, I I, I want to ask you a little bit about the, the managerial change. Mike Schilt takes over. And let me say this before I, I ask this question. By no means am I trying to say that Bo Mel didn't do these things. But just in, in my time getting to spend with Mike Schilt, he seems very detail-oriented. He seems very driven by the team aspect in terms of, how you guys feel about wanting to, one another and, and and kind of coming together. Are you sensing that already in just a little bit of, of spring training you've had already? Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, he empowers the players too. I mean, he's got a way and he's got a way of talking to you that, you know, inspires you and motivates yeah. you to, to do a little more on your end as a player. So, you know, I got to spend the last two years with them, you know, side by side in the dugout, just talking baseball and, you know, gaining some knowledge from him. I mean, he's been around the game since he was nine, 10 years old, growing up in, you know, double A clubhouse, coaching at every single level along, along the way. I mean, the guy's got as much experience as you could ask for in a manager. Um, but yeah, he does a really good job communicating with the guys and making it very clear what the expectations are. And then, you know, putting the power in the hands of the players and, you know, forcing us to take a little bit of accountability and a little bit of ownership of what we're doing and, and try to police things and, and run things ourselves from within. As you do a little look back at the 2023 season as you're sitting there getting ready for this year and you compare what ended up happening last year to what happened the year before, is it as simple as saying that you guys just couldn't get over the hump in terms of getting hits with runners in scoring position and winning close games? I mean, the record was 9-23 and in one-run games. It was the complete opposite of that the year before. Is it as simple as that to say last year didn't work out because of those things, or was there more at work here? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is one of Shilty's big things that he says all the time, and he said it countless times since he's, you know, taken the helm here. It's that, <clears throat> you know, this game is, you know, the best players in this game are elite adjusters. Mm. And, you know, mm. we just really weren't that last year. You know, we had plans of how we wanted to go about it. We knew, you know, what the expectation was of ourselves as a lineup, how we were going to score runs, how we were going to produce. And we weren't getting those, you know, we weren't having that success with driving the ball in and, you know, the doubles and homers and our slug not being very high, the runners in scoring position average, you know, those things weren't 
falling into place for us early in the year and we did not do a good job of adjusting the game plan and doing what we had to do to win. I feel like we married ourselves to that expectation of what our lineup was built to do and, um, you know, we didn't adjust very well. So you'd like to say it's as easy as that, but I feel like that's the main reason is we did not adjust on the fly and, and we weren't in that category of elite adjusters like, you know, you see at this level. You said that word twice, and I got goosebumps. Elite <laughs> adjusters. I mean, that is as, as simple as it, I think you can put it. You, you mentioned some of the arms that you guys got back in the deal um, for Juan Soto. Michael King, we're talking Brito, we're talking Vasquez, we're talking a young kid, Thorpe. Um, integrating those arms, because, you know, as of right now, a, at least a few of those guys are going to be pieces that, you know, could possibly be in this rotation um, how do you bring those guys in? I think this is your strong suit, and you're not the only one. You Darvish does it in his own way as well. But talk about bringing in those young guys, install, installing that confidence, installing that kind of uh, the the idea of what you guys want to accomplish as a as a unit. Yeah, um, I think our our little off season camp that we do every year in in January is a big part of that. You know, bringing these these new guys in and some of these young guys and giving them a week prior to spring training to, to meet the staff, to meet some of the other players, to, you know, see what the expectation is, how we do things here, meet some of the behind the scenes guys with the analytics and just kind of kickstart things and give these guys a week to kind of adjust to some of the people and, you know, get their feet underneath them before they get here. But, you know, we talked about it a lot this off season, myself, Manny, uh, Toddy Darvish, all these guys that are, you know, under contract going to be here for a while that, you know, we have a lot of young guys now and we're going to need these guys to produce. And I think for them to be the best player that they can be, they have to be comfortable. They got to be able yeah. to, to play with that swagger and with a little bit of attitude and personality. And I think a lot of that comes from the veterans on the team creating that atmosphere. You know, these they got to understand that we're here to win games. You know, we're not here to make them feel like rookies. We're not here to belittle them or make them feel like they're anything less than we are. You know, we're here to win. So having said that, there are, you know, there is a pecking order and there are some unwritten rules that you try to follow. And it's really just respect, you know, respect the guys around you, respect the guys that have more time than you in the game, mm. but be yourself, you know, play the game the way you, the way that you play it, play with some passion, with some fire. And, uh, you know, if your mind's in the right place with everything you do, you know, we have everyone in that clubhouse is going to have your back. So just bringing them in and trying to get them to understand that, hey, we're not here to embarrass you guys or belittle you or make you feel like a rookie. We want you to be impact players on this team, and we need you to be at your best and, and play with some you know, some freedom out there. How many people have come up to you and, and guys on this team and said, man, you guys are really up against it. I mean, look what the Dodgers did this offseason, and I mean, they're going to be impossible to beat and all of this stuff. And you know in your heart that it doesn't come down to that. It comes down to execution and – being a just doing a just what did he say? Elite adjuster. Thank you. Being yes. an elite That's adjuster. Right. Yes, I'm going to put that in my in my bank of uh, yeah, bookmark that one. Bookmark that one. But you know, those are the things that are going to decide the season. And, and if you can perform, you know, this Padre team performs the way it can. Uh, I don't see why you can't keep up with the Dodgers. I know you guys aren't going into the season thinking anything but that. Yeah, I mean, we've been on that side. We were that we were that team mm, last year yeah. where everyone looked at our team on paper and saw who we were and what was expected of us, and that's not always the best thing for you. Sometimes to have a little chip on your shoulder and to be counted out a little bit adds a little fuel to the fire. So, um, like you said, you know, this team is capable of beating any team in the big leagues, you know, when we play the way we, that we expect to play. So it's about finding out the way to pull that out of us every night, you know finding ways to, to create that energy and, and to kickstart things in the in the beginning of the year better than we did last year. And I think a lot of that starts in spring training with, you know, some of these meetings and talking about, you know, what we expect of ourselves and how we're going to run things on a daily basis to ultimately get to the end goal. Um, but all that stuff starts now. So, you know, just building that, building that foundation in spring is super important. Joe, I, I got one that's not as serious as all these other questions has been. Um, you know, mm -hmm. typically for position players, you know, about three and a half weeks in, you're like, all right, I'm ready for this to go. Now, pitchers is different, especially because you're building up. But is there any part of you that is by the time you get to spring is like, let's just get to the real stuff, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very soon, actually. <laughs> sooner than sooner than later in spring. Um, yeah, for, for starters, it's, it's usually once you're into that that four or five inning range where you start feeling like, okay, I'm built up now. I'm ready to go. 
um, early in camp, you're still trying to get your feet under you. A lot of guys haven't even been in spikes for, you know, as long as you spend in them in spring training, running around doing PFPs and, you know, conditioning and spikes. There's a lot of things and just getting your body prepped and stuff. But yeah. you get through that first week or two, you start to feel really consistent in your routine, your body's recovering well, and you start getting the edge for, for some real games. But it's nice for us this year. You know, we come into spring a week early, um, you know, get things started when most people aren't working and uh, get to get out of here a few weeks early, which yeah. is nice as well. So we've got to really maximize, you know, the time that we got here and get as much out of it as we can because Korea is going to come, you know, faster than we know it. Is there any chance you think you could pitch in Korea? I know you're, again, you said you're taking a one checkbox at a time. But could we see you in one of those first two games? Yeah, so we've talked about that already um, with Shilty and Ruben uh, about how we want to go about it. No decisions have been made yet, but, um, you know, that's definitely, those are two games that, you know, count towards the record book. So, um, you know, we're going to, we expect to be around that five inning mark by then. So me and Darvish would both be ready to go should, you know, the ball be handed to us in that situation. Say less. I think that's the answer that everybody wanted to hear anyway. Joe, we appreciate you coming off, man, on a day off. Uh, Shilty gave you guys the day off. We appreciate you coming on, spending some time with us, man. Appreciate you. Absolutely, guys. Always enjoy it. It's real easy, Joe. You go to YouTube, you search 97.3 The Fan. <laughs> and, it, I mean, even I can do it. So if I can pull it off, you know, you should be able to watch the show and, you know, stay in I'm touch. Sure I'll, I'm sure I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. Take care, brother. Thanks, Joe. No, no, Joe. Uh, one of the highlights we had last year on the program, uh, Scraby and I had him on one day, Tony, I think after you had oh, yes. gone. Yes, yes. And remember, there was it was a midseason game, and there was some question as to who was going to uh, pitch that day for the Padres, maybe the day before the All-Star break or something. And Joe announced It was going on, into the All-Star that's break. That's right, yes. And he announced on our show that – that's right. That's I will right. take the ball. And Chris and I lost We were so our excited. We were so minds. excited that we got the breaking news. <laughs> well, we have more breaking news there. I mean, he said that he and Darvish are, you know, in line to make those starts against the Dodgers in Korea. Hopefully that will uh, turn out to be the case. He said nothing's official yet, but they have had talks. Certainly makes sense that those two guys are healthy. Makes they would get sense. the uh they would get those two starts against LA once uh once you guys get to Korea, did um is he officially you think the number one in the rotation? Because I was looking at MLB Network last night and they predicted the rotation. His name was at the top, and then it was you. I wouldn't be surprised. I I, I bet that's kind of how why it's not going to be announced now. Right? You're going to build everybody up. Then you'll you'll start to see the jockeying if they start lining guys up so that it matches up with Korea. That's how it usually works. All right. Darvish seems like a number one guy though. Not that Joe doesn't, but Darvish has always been number one wherever he's been. But does it really matter? No. No. Maybe I mean, it am. does for the guys. I mean, they can. They like here. to know. You can. You they can sit here and tell us that oh, I don't care if I go. But I mean, if you got well, a chance, I know to Musgrove be, wants to make the uh, the first start. Yeah, want, could, for sure. He got to make it at home last year. I, I'm I'm sure he's going to want to do it. All right, five seconds. Give us Four, a break. Chris three, versus the fans, 
Into the four o'clock hour we roll. Tony Woodwood Jr., Chris Zello, Matt Scraby. Got a Chris versus the fans coming your way. I don't know if you were able to catch the number that Scraby gave you because it, it seemed like it was a, a run on number. 833. Yeah, well, I, I know what the number is, but what was the first number you gave? I have no idea. I was trying you to attempt, say it quickly. Do you want to? 833. Chris, you get that? 833-288-0973. What is Chris doing? I didn't get it. I didn't get that. But uh, what it surprises me is that we're now in the sixth year of the show. And every time I give out the phone number, I still have to look around to find it. (laughs) You'd think it would just roll off the tongue a little better than that by now. 833-288-0973. If you want to take your shot at Mr. Ello. Scraby, did you have time to replenish the questions? Somewhat. That means no. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> that that literally means no. You know, sometimes I sit down and I do the question or I try to do the questions and I just like get through two and then I'm I can't find any more, so then I forget. But one thing I want to say, because Joe Musgrove sounds like he listens to the station quite often. And sounds like he does. I have a little secondhand embarrassment of myself that um do he's you, heard me you... talk about aliens and all of my crazy thoughts. Well, I so. mean, he he continues to listen, so I mean True. maybe. Maybe he, he finds point. you entertaining as well. Oh, wow. That would be, a, a, honestly, that would make my That would year. be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> I didn't say it actually was true. Did I just somebody said... find Scraby entertaining? <laughs> yes, that would be something. I hate you guys sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'm going I'm to roll back on the alien theory. No, straight. Uh, yeah. Continue to do you, man. People... Joe Musgrove is just such a, he's, he's a guy I want to be like, I want to reflect wanna... myself well. <laughs> I can when see I that. see Joe Musgrove, I can see that. I mean, yeah. uh, it was certainly nice for him to to come hang with us for on his off day. He could have been, you know, for Joe, he could have been walking a trail barefoot. He could have been doing a whole bunch of different things, but he decided to come on here and spend not ten but fifteen minutes 15. with your boys. Did he bring his dog out? I'm sure he brought his I'm dog sh- with him. I'm spring sure training. his dog is with him. I if yeah, if I'm going to spring training, Lucky's coming too. Um. So we've had Joe, we've had Sean Lewis on today. Rob Manfred is going to retire. Rob Manfred at some point. is tired of the Who? the the. the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> Do you have that? Too? Uh, I'll go get it. I love you, Corey. <laughs> Are we the only show in the country that still makes fun of the poor guy for that? I think so. I think we are. (laughs) It's been a while. We haven't let that one go. That was 2020, wasn't it? Yeah. We haven't let it go for three (laughs) three and a half years. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, man. Um, Did you guys see Lenny Dykstra recovering from a stroke? I heard about that. Who is? Lenny 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 Dykstra, the former uh, ball player. Uh, According to some of his ex, some of... uh, one of his ex teammates said uh, it was actually Daryl Strawberry and Kevin Mitchell, who, you know, of San Diego said Dystra was in good spirits and is set to undergo further uh, evaluation at UCLA Medical Center. Uh, but it is said that he uh, had a had a stroke and was hospitalized, uh, will be hospitalized into next week. So. I thought Daryl Strawberry had some very nice things to say. I mean, Dykstra's gone through a lot in yeah. his life. He's been uh, his name has been run through the gambit. I mean, he spent six and a half months in jail for a lot of the things that he was involved in. And Strawberry said, "You know what? I love this guy. I'm going to support him. He's always been my teammate. And it's easy to sit there and throw stones, yep. but we've all made mistakes. Yeah. And you know that's a that's what should be said at yeah. a time like this." And Daryl Strawberry hit, struck the right note. And nothing like having some good friends that have your back no matter what. Kevin Mitchell told the Post he's laying down, but he's he's being Lenny. We get to an age, and we're getting to an age now where we have to got we've got to take care of ourselves. And I told him he has to take more care of himself. You can't let stress bother you. You've been through a lot. I love him uh, with all my heart. I, I got a chance to 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 see Lenny. Uh, I wouldn't say met, meet him because I had met him when I was younger, but I played with his son, Cutter Dykstra, my very last season. And I remember him coming in to visit, and he, he'd been through a lot. I mean, I didn't recognize him at the time um, because he just looked so much different than he did as a ball player, considering all of the things he, he went through. But uh, hopefully sending him well wishes and uh, 
I do. Good I, health. I've never, Good I've health. never was. I was always a Lenny Dykstra fan watching him play. Haven't been a fan of all the decisions he's made since he's played. Fair but enough. doesn't mean that I, you know, not going to root for the guy right now to make a comeback. Yeah. To your point, he, Strawberry said he's a special friend. I will never turn my back on him and say negative things. So I think he's, uh, he certainly uh, got some got some good ones there to to kind of help him get through this. All right, let's play uh, let's play some Chris versus the fans. If you had one shot, one opportunity to take down the human almanac himself, howdy do. Now is your time. Listen to me, this guy is dangerous. Now is your opportunity to win a prize. Well, I hope you know Jen for Chris versus the fans starts now on 97.3 The Fan. All right. I think we had a pretty good player yesterday. I can't remember how many players we were in yesterday, but I, I still had some good uh, amount of questions left. So yeah, that, that's always a good yeah, sign. Are we going to be doing uh, coaches' middle names for 100 again today, Alex? <laughs> I, I mean, that really was I don't kind think... of crazy. I mean, be honest. I'm not, I gave you credit earlier this week for some good questions. That but was, I'm not going to give you credit for what is Mike Schultz's middle name. I, I was thinking it when I asked him. Seriously. I was like, I mean, nobody knows anybody's middle name. I think that it's a fair question to ask the San Diego Padres <laughs> no, manager's not. middle name. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's it's not, not a fair, fair question. Fair. Come on. It's fair uh, for the listener. Let's yeah, just say right. whoever got it won. Let's just say Scraby is going to be in trouble should we get to the third round more than once. I'm going to replenish this weekend, but it has been a crazy. It has. Week. It has. There's no judgment being being. Quiet. It sounds like there's some judgment. <laughs> there's some, it sounds like you're telling everybody I didn't do my job. And I so, mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. saying we might have to go to the uh, tiebreaker a little earlier than normal. That's all I'm saying, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Let's get to our first contestant, Lance. Wait, we haven't read the prize oh, or the rules. If he needs any more third, <laughs> we even hit the. the if he needs any more third question, you can just start going down the roster. What's Manny Machado's middle name? What's uh, Fernando uh, Tatis's middle name? I think I know Manny's middle name. You don't. Have we even played the, the song yet? Yes, we played the song, okay. uh, but the rules are you have to make it through three questions. Each question will get more difficult. If you get the question right, you move on. If you get the question wrong and Chris gets it right, you're eliminated. But if Chris gets it wrong, then you move on to the next question or you win. If you're a first-time player, player, let us know before you get into the first question. and You will get that question for free. And today we are playing for a qualification to Las Vegas. A two night stay at Westgate Las Vegas and two tickets to Air Supply. With a legacy spanning decades, Air Supply continues to captivate hearts. Now in their 45th anniversary year, the duo continues to play more than 130 shows a year worldwide. Join us in celebrating their music and enduring legacy on May 31st and June 1st, 2024 at the Westgate International Theater at Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Sorry, I needed to swallow. Yeah, go ahead. Do your thing. <laughs> Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. The Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino features newly designed premier rooms, part of their $70 million room renovations, home of legendary Vegas fun. You guys remember when I made my air supply joke yesterday? It was a classic. I know that. How old are these guys? I hope they're getting still getting they have good enough air, air after 45 oh, yeah, years. Right. Oh. Well, I received a message saying that his 93 year old grandma thought it was hilarious, and I will take that. Well, I will take that too. But you tread lightly there, buddy, talking about breathing and in, in older folks. Especially talking about breathing around me. Right. The loudest <laughs> breather <laughs> around oh, God. San Diego County. You said it. Let's get to our first contestant. Lance, welcome Wait, to the show. Did he just say he was the loudest breather <laughs> in San Diego <laughs> County? You can't help it. He did. He definitely did. <laughs> Lance, welcome to the show. Happy Thursday. Oh, uh, wait. Which one's Lance? Lance. You tell me. Okay, there you go. Hi, Lance. Hi there. How are you doing? We're doing Pretty well, good. man. How about yourself? Doing awesome. All, All right, right. Here we go. First question. <laughs> Toys R Us is no longer with us, but what kind of animal was their mascot? <laughs> a giraffe. A giraffe is correct. <laughs> Toys R Us is no longer with us. Yes, no longer with us. See, even Lance got a chuckle out of that question. I uh, <laughs> last time I saw my nieces, I had a big old long talk about Toys R Us, and they did not understand. They will it. never understand it. My I was, kids, I think maybe my oldest daughter caught a little bit of Toys R Us. There was something to be said about going into a store that just had nothing, nothing but stuff but you toys. liked. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was great. I would always get like a pack of uh, football cards or baseball cards, but they were like, wait, so you had to go to a store to get someone's yeah, they, birthday they present? Even, they I'm can't like, even yes. fathom it. Like, it's I, crazy. The, the only reason why I wanted to go to New York for the longest period of time was to go to FAO Schwartz. You could have gone to San Francisco. Well, I didn't know that at the time when I was younger. But I just FAO was Schwartz was amazing. Beautiful. In Home Alone 2, that, that toy store, I would have loved to be locked in there. Every kid would have wanted to be in there. Yeah. All right, here we go. Second Chris question. Chris like, what? <laughs> I saw Home Alone 2. You saw Home Alone 2? No, I saw Home Alone 1. I'm not big on 2s. Lost it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> what St. Louis Cardinals manager has coached the most games in franchise history? Uh, Larissa. Nice, nice work. Job. Scraby's nightmare. Here we go. Question Ooh, number I didn't three. Realize there was only one left. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. What team did RG three lose to in the wild card round when he injured his knee? Uh, let's go with the. Packers. Packers. Stay there. Chris Ella for the steal. I remember this game. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Washington had a 14 nothing lead, but the Seattle Seahawks came back, I believe. Sorry, Lance. Sorry good, about good that, try. Good try. Sorry, Lance. Sorry. Sorry. We'll go to the next contestant, Javier. Hold Javier. On, question number three. <laughs> Hold on, Javier. You're next. As soon as Craby finishes writing question number three. Okay, there we go. Javier, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Here we go. First question. <laughs> what year did they, I don't know who that is, start construction on Petco Park? The construction workers. Uh, what year? What year did they start it? Ninety-nine. Oh, Stay there, bad, now. Man. Hello for the steal. No, it passed in nineteen ninety-eight. It did. I don't know that they started construction that quickly. I would have guessed nineteen ninety-nine. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. He's going to buzz me. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it to Javier. I'll say really? ninety-eight if you'll accept that. Oh wait, sorry. No, it's, no, that was an acceptance buzzer. Of his answer, oh, okay. <laughs> not his actual. The actual answer gets a. Javier is still there. Two thousand. Yeah. Oh, well, Two thousand. Oh, it took a year. Typical San Diego. I should have yeah, known. It ran into some some red tape That's there. Right. I think it didn't open for like four years. Two thousand. Yeah, a long time. Four. No. Two thousand three or four. Oh, it was. I think it was right. four. It was four. So it took six years after the vote. And and we cost ourselves billions and billions of dollars trying <laughs> to process. fight against it. We're such a what a wonderful spot we have here. <laughs> Question number uh -oh. two. <laughs> Steve Spagnolo was defensive coordinator for what team to start his coordinating career? That's tough. The Giants. Wow. That's tough. Nice God. work. Nice work. Yeah. I would have, yeah. if I were him, I would have said Eagles because I swear they said he was a coach with Andy Reid before he was anything. So. Scrape, I have to be honest. We've asked the new question in about 100 different ways. Okay. Um. All right. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, He's just making this up on the fly. On the fly. Oh, boy. Javier, this could be very good news for you, or it could be very bad news. Who knows? Here we go. Who? What is Steve Spagnuolo's middle name? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't even know that. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm about to say this right. Here we go. Who caught the famous pass, the squeeze between the cheese? Yes. Squeeze between the cheese? Yep. I swear Scraby just made this up. Nope, he did. No clue. <laughs> no clue, says Javier. Stay there, Javier. Unfortunately for you, Javier, I've hung around this guy far too long. Oh, no. The cheese has to be the Packers, and the guy who caught the pass is Terrell Owens, I'm guessing. Sorry, Scrape. <sighs> Sorry, All right, hold Javier. on, hold on. I got another one. I got another one. Uh, we'll go to our next contestant, Scott. Welcome to the show. Happy Scott Thursday. Scott is right there. Hey guys, that was a really good interview with Musgrove. Oh, He's thank an impressive you. Thanks. dude. Yes, he is yes. an impressive yes, dude. He, he always is. is. Here we always go. good to us. First question 
Who is our Padres MLB.com reporter? Uh, Agent Casabelle. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Nice work, Scott. Agent. On to question number two. The nickname of the Savannah baseball team is what? The Bananas. Wow. Light, light work for Scott here. Okay, here we go. Give, me, give me a second. Oh, give me yeah, a second. Okay. You're making Scott sweat over there. Cruising through two questions. Sorry, Scott. We're waiting on a question number three here. <laughs> okay. Can you, imagine, can you imagine on Jeopardy? <laughs> and it's time for final Jeopardy, but you have to hang on just a second there, contestants. You know, the Jeopardy question makers, that's their only job. All right, Scott. Here we go. Question. question number three. When Tiger Tiger Woods, y'all, won the 2019 Masters, who did he beat? Name all. Name two. Name two. Of what? The three. <laughs> Wait a minute. What are you talking about? When Tiger Woods won in 2019, right? Who did he finish above? Above? Or who was that? Everybody place? was in the tournament. <laughs> finished above. Is that, what you mean? Is that the answer you're looking for? Well, he's he's looking for who finished runner up. This is right? the process of me writing the question. Runner up. Yes. Third place. Yes. Runner up. Yes. Okay, that's yes. fair. Uh. Speaking of Jeopardy, can I call Ken Jennings for the uh, for <laughs> No kidding, man. <laughs> no Not kidding. a bad idea. So you just have to name two because this is pretty tough. Uh, I don't know. Try Hideki Mar- uh, Matsuyama. Hideki Matsuyama? He did win the Masters, but it was not that year. Hello? Well, I remember Kepka being in the hunt in this particular one. So I don't know that he didn't fall out of it far enough to not be second, but I feel like that's a legit guess. Okay. So you got to give us I'm one gonna more. I'm going to try Kepka. Uh, Kepka. The other one, I have no idea. Um, Rory McElroy. I don't know. Unfortunately, he hates the Masters. Oh, well. I don't know. Does that mean he doesn't Scott, play, or that means no, he, he, just, just, he, he hates he, it because he's not good there? Well, in, in 2010, he was, like, leading by, like, maybe eight shots, and oh, he duck-hooked right. it into the cabins and ended up losing. The so. good old duck-hook. Scott, tell Can, Scott whether he won or not. Oh, he's sorry, on Scott. Pins and needles yeah, Scott, over there. You, you won, my man. Hey, Stay right hey, there. Right, Scott. Hang on the line. line. Uh, Dustin Johnson finished second, and yes, your boy Brooks Kepka. Oh, Kepka was correct. Third. I got yes. it. No, no, no. Those guys all finished second. That's why I was saying. Oh, they all finished yeah, second. Yeah, Dustin ah. Johnson, Brooks Kepka, and Xander Shoffley. Oh, so I needed Johnson you, and Sh- or Shoffley. Correct. One of the two. Right, well, I got one. Well, yes, you did. Something. Good thing you didn't because Scott wins now and he is now good qualified for, you, for this uh, Vegas trip. I promise I'll have more questions tomorrow. There you go. That was a pretty awesome. good question for coming up with it on the fly. By the way, you know, we, we air on this show from time to time. Stuff like that happens. Scraby doesn't have enough questions. We forget where we're going. 100%. Scraby messes up, pushes the wrong button. <laughs> Who got in your message? Scraby mentions? does another thing wrong. Scraby does it. So I was watching this the other night on. Uh, uh, I don't know. It was like Facebook Reels. You know, they just get a oh, bunch yes. of videos. They had a video it's once. Addicting, and, by the way, it is right. You start watching <laughs> you, and you're you on there for like stuck. two hours. <laughs> there was a video the other night of Johnny Carson, the famous Johnny Carson show, and he comes out with his sidekick Ed McMahon, and they come back from commercial, and Carson is dressed in his outfit where he was the amazing something i can't remember his character's name but what he used to do the he used to karnak the magnificent anyway the bit was that he would hold an envelope up to his head and he would say tony gwynn like gave the answer then he'd open up the envelope and there'd be a really funny question that the answer would have been tony gwynn gotcha so he comes out to do this segment and Ed McMahon introduces him, and here he is, the the Karnak, the Magnificent, and Johnny Carson sits down, and he's ready for the segment. Cameras are rolling. This is live television back in those <laughs> days. The whole thing's going on and on. And Ed McMahon goes, we're ready for the first question. And, of course, Johnny Carson had a cheat sheet in front of him so that he knew what was in the envelope. He didn't actually come up right, with this right he wasn't some nostradamus right so they give him the first envelope he holds it up to his head he looks down and he doesn't have his cheat sheet <laughs> and johnny carson doesn't know what in the world to do this is live television and he's like kind of finally whispers over to ed mcmahon i don't have the answers 
<laughs> that is that and is our show. To and that's our right show. There. When I saw that, I'm like, that's our show to a T right there. For sure. They actually had to go to a commercial to so they get the cheat back, sheet so they could get the cheat sheet out so that Johnny Carson could do that segment. I figured, you know what? If it can happen on a famous show like that. Might as well happen on this show. Indeed. We got to get to break. We are well past our time. Scraby's losing it. More Gwen and Chris on the other side of some traffic. From the 97.3 The
Scraby, I think you like this story. It's actually, uh, well, it's pretty new. Cleveland Guardians made an announcement today. Wait, bring it back the, to Spiders? What the Guardians say? This is something that only I think Scraby would kind of appreciate. The uh, Guardians are due to open the season this year, April 8th, against the Chicago White Sox at 5.10 p.m. However, at 5.10 p.m. on April the 8th, there will be a total solar eclipse, Whoa. an event that hasn't happened in Cleveland or in the Northeast Ohio area since 1806. Wow. It's been over 200 years since this has happened. Team says now it is going to begin the game at uh, 410. Jeez. They're going to change the time. Actually, I don't know. It's a very confusing story here. They Anyway, they changed the time of the game to account for the Total solar eclipse. Are you aware of this total solar eclipse? This I is know. the kind of stuff that I normally interests coming. you. Well, I'm not um, living in northern Ohio, so I, I Well, don't is know. it only going to be there? Well, I think the reason they probably haven't seen it is because of the angle they are in the earth and the way they – seriously. I, no, I, the I way, wanted him to way, try to explain the way you said <laughs> I'm not saying that you're wrong, but the way you said it just You know, the, I am the son you, of a science teacher. Well, okay? here's, here, here's your explanation. Cleveland is one of a few major cities in North America that is in the path of totality, oh, which is a 100-mile cool. track of the moon's shadow. And uh, so I was right. The angle. Official, it's the angle. Yeah, the, angle, the, officials, the angle to the angle. The officials have estimated that over 200,000 video visitors will come to Cleveland Whoa. to witness this celestial show. Most um, school, most you said it's a 100-mile track? 100-mile track track of the moon shadow wow. and cleveland's really one of the main you know Spots major right cities where it's going to happen what yeah. was it called again the track of totality they're in the uh, path of totality that's my new band name that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> that's what <laughs> that's, <laughs> i'm gonna leave hey everybody it's path to totality that's, that's or actually, of totality that's actually where i'm gonna leave you when i'm done with you in our uh Oh, you're going to leave off. me in a path of totality. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All uh, right. Washington Nationals general manager Mike Rizzo, he's a man after my heart, put a, put a new sign up in the team's spring training bullpen. A bunch bullpen. of new signs. <laughs> yeah, but one of them I, it strikes a nice chord, Tony. It, it does. What's it say? It says, I don't care how hard you throw ball four it might say fast you right. throw ball how four. fast you throw ball four that's right and yeah I in other words he's saying i, I want hold. command that's right not throw velocity. strikes throw yes. strikes i've always you know, been a big you know throw what, strikes it's, it's funny because you know nationals had a nice ride where they're at the top of the food chain you yep. it's funny what happens and the things you have to now focus on when the talent starts to kind of Drop a little yes, bit. you can't afford. You don't, three you don't have like the, the hundred mile per hour arms, or if you do, you rather learn teach them how to actually use it and throw strikes. I used to hate walks more than anything on earth. I mean, I hated giving a walk when I pitched. I hate watching them when I you know watch baseball. But Blake Snell changed my whole opinion of the walk last year. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's uh, because I mean nobody walked more guys than him, and yet he was the best pitcher in baseball. That, that might be the fool's goal because really he was. is he is uh, he is a unicorn when it comes yeah, to that. That's the only They're, guy that could get away with. I him. I very rarely got like super frustrated on the field, but if we had a guy come yeah. in, and it typically only happened in the minor leagues, right. Middle of the sixth just, inning. He just can't throw a strike. And I know he's not night. trying to throw a strike. That's right. But no, you know not what? trying please. to throw balls, but, yeah, but please. you'd be an outfield just over. Yeah. dog cussing him under your breath. Like, yeah, oh this God. is embarrassing. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, Scraby takes us through today's Big Five. Hope you've been listening to the show today. It's been a good one. Sean Lewis from San Diego State, their football coach, Joe Musgrove from the Padres. That's what you've missed if you're just tuning in now. But 90 minutes of fun still ahead on Gwen and Chris. Ben and Wood.
It is indeed time for Scraby to shine. Big five coming your way. Doesn't always shine in this segment. He doesn't, but this is his time, though. This, this is his time. This that, is his time. He's got a chance to shine. To shine. I'm sorry. Will he take advantage of it? He should have said that. Yeah. So I can basically just do whatever I want outside of this segment, and then this is the segment I need this, to be my best this at? Is, this is your se- This is this is what got the Scraby Chronicles popping. It's true. It was this segment. It was. You're right. Scraby so, Chronicles, 6 o'clock tonight. Don't miss it. Especially what don't was miss your gripe the last night, Yeah, what was the, the gripe last oh, night? Oh, the gripe last night was um, – when people bring aggressive dogs to the dog park, oh, oh yeah, good, I had someone good, yelling good. at me yesterday. Troublesome. Yesterday. Do you have an aggressive dog? I don't have an aggressive dog. He, why were you being yelled at? Because because the person was saying that my dogs were riling up their dogs, and I shouldn't have my dogs run up to his dog because his well, dog sounds like your dog was being aggressive. Lucky would never. Lucky is the most playful. Yes, but if it comes <laughs> running into the face of a little dog, they why don't are you know at that. a dog park? Because <laughs> they have a dog. Whoa! <laughs> why are You're you speaking at a to dog somebody park? with a smaller dog like we have? We've come to dog parks. We no longer oh, go. What did we get started? See, into this? We can't. that's fine. Well, it's not fine. Why shouldn't we be able to bring our dog to the dog park? That's a good question. Because people like you allow your big dogs to go racing across the the park at my dog. What and did, I have no idea, nor does anybody else, whether your dog's going to attack or come over to play. What did Lucky do to upset this uh, bystander? No, it wasn't. No, okay, so. Well, you, you said that the uh, yeah, man okay. or woman was upset was man. With you because he said your dog riled his dogs up. Okay, so what happens is, what this is what happens with every single dog there. When they come into the park, the, on, man, there's no judgment here. You don't the have to dog, come at me I'm, so hard. I'm angry after Chris said that. <laughs> the dogs all go and welcome that dog like a welcoming party, what and I, I completely understand that's got to be scary for some dogs. Okay, I, I get that. And, and so I, why are you so angry? Because why? And then the dog was like, and trying to bite <laughs> dogs, and like, this is your dog? No, the Their other dog. dog. So they yelled at me saying that I need to keep my dog on a leash. And I'm like, it's an unleashed dog park. It's, is it multiple people yelling at you at this point? No, it's point? just one person. Oh, okay. It just was really, uh, it upset me. But what are you angry about? I want to know that what you you're bring, angry about. Okay. That I have a small Here's, dog? No. Should dog parks only be for dogs that are a certain size? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, that shows how ridiculous you are no, as usual. My my gripe is that you know you have a dog that's got anxiety or something. Anxiety? This she is, has no this, anxiety. I'm not talking about, about your dog. My my wife has anxiety about <laughs> your dog racing across the lawn let's, at her. Let's remove Chris Ello and, yeah, and your dog. Yeah, what is happening? right now. All right, I'll we're, remove myself. We're just talking about this particular situation. <laughs> um, Sorry, what? <laughs> Oh, your dog. My my whole thing is when you bring a dog to the dog park, I don't mind if you keep it on a leash. That's your thing. You want to walk a dog around, but when you're at a dog park that's an unleashed dog park and you're mad at dogs that come up and say hello to your dog, that's I, my issue. I, I, no, I didn't know there was a an unleashed dog park. That's uh if that is the case, then what are you 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 have to know that going in there, right? I don't understand why they were mad. Now let's at you. turn the tables a little bit, Scraby. You've got Lucky the dog, and he's not on a leash, but he's standing close to you. And some gigantic German Shepherd with snarling teeth comes racing across the lawn Towards at your Lucky. dog. Yeah, are you not going to feel some type of way about trying to protect your dog? Are you just going to let your dog get slaughtered? <laughs> well, Bucky would. Well, I mean, it, then, you know, then this is your Lucky, whole point: is that Lucky my dog's is. big, your dog is little, so my dog should be able to do whatever it wants and dominate your dog. And my point is, is you're being totally unfair. My my issue, because I would not bring because okay, here I got it, got it, and we're going to a carryover we're, on the big we're five. Definitely going to a carryover. I okay, so there is a dog in the neighborhood that Lucky, for some reason, they don't get along. And they, they always got, they got beef. dog beef. Yeah, they got for some reason. Yeah, dog beef. They got dog beef. <laughs> for some reason, they have dog beef. But every time they see each other, they do the whole stop thing and they stare at each other. I turn around and I take Lucky the other way. Right, I don't want to deal this with way, it. Lucky. Yes, okay. Lucky, come with me, and he'll turn around. And he'll come with me. That's as a dog owner. I'm not going to take my dog to a dog park if I'm afraid of something happening to it. And if there was a dog that was vicious and tried to attack Lucky, yeah, I would be really upset if the, a dog came up and attacked them. But if they're playing and things like that, it's a whole different nature. 
But if you bring a dog that's aggressive and that likes to attack dogs to a dog park, I believe that is your fault. It wow. might be your fault, but it's my dog that's going to pay the price, so I can't take that risk. This it, is yeah. This, that's why you don't bring your dog to a dog park. Thank you for answering the this, question. This well, was, but this that was, doesn't seem quite fair to me. This was the gripe yesterday, huh? Yes. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to see what the gripe is today. I don't have one. Yet. <laughs> it might be Chris and his stupid small dog. Uh, that no. wasn't nice. I, you're right. I take it back. I love Kylie. She's not stupid. She's a great dog. You better hope Lori would listen. Yeah, no, I better hope. No, you're it's absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Let's get to traffic and then the Big Five carryover. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Soapy Joe's. Got a crash and clearing stage on southbound 5 right around Claremont Drive. Also traveling on the northbound 5 right at the East Gate Connector ramp. Collision involving a couple of vehicles. Accident on the Friars Road off ramp south 163. Traveling on northbound 15, right before Camino del Norte, we have reports of a stalled vehicle in the HOV lane up ahead at the 76 transition ramp. Collision involving a couple vehicles does not appear to be blocking lanes. Chief Bubble Officer Tony Quinn Jr. offers some exciting news. Sobe Joe's newest location is now open on Cuyamaca Street in Santee. Come and join the Wash Club to get unlimited washes. Come drive in today at the all-new Sobe Joe's on Cuyamaca in Santee. Sobe Joe's is good, clean, fun. I'm Kelly Danik. With Gwen and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, the fan. It's that time of the show when we check on the latest in sports. Only the most important topics and questions are brought to light. Stop what you're doing and listen. These news stories will astound and amaze you. The one, the only. Oh my God, who the hell cares? The Big Five starts now on 97.3 The Fan. All right, I'm going to officially apologize for saying Kylie was stupid. That was wrong of me. I would be very angry if Chris called Lucky stupid, so I am wrong for that. Scraby is no longer welcome in our home. <laughs> I don't see a smiley face attached to this email. No blush, oh, oh, no. No blushy <laughs> smiley face. No. Oh, no. Uh Alyssa or Elisa, you can type and let me know how to pronounce your name, but it's uh, they're saying no aggressive dogs and no scaredy cat dogs should be at the off leash dog park. You got to know your pups, which I, think, I agree with. I think that's pretty accurate. That's no, pretty accurate. no extremes. Yeah. yeah. Got to be in the middle. You got to be a normal dog. Who just wants to go run around and play. So there we go. Number five. With the rumors of Hassan Kim on the trading block, there are also some rumors out there the Padres could potentially extend Hassan Kim. Now, I don't know how far these rumors are going along with him, but, you know, they're, they are being floated out there. He's got one more season on his contract, and we've talked about all of the different storylines. Trade him. That's basically it. Tony, do you think extending Hassan Kim right now is the right idea? No. I don't. I think uh, I also don't think trading him right now is is the answer. I think Hasung is coming off of his best season yet. Um, but I think you still want to see a little bit more. It, it took him what two years to get to to this point. Now, if he continues to ascend as we saw him do last year. Yeah, you start to entertain ex, inter, entertain an extension as you get into the season a little bit. But that right now, I think there's still some things you want to see to to make sure. You you already are extended with Bogarts, Toddy, Manny, Darv, Musgrove. Am I missing anybody? Cronenworth. Yep. So I just, you know. Make Xander? Sure, did you say Xander? I said Xander. Okay. Make sure you, you got this. That he is who he has presented himself to be over the last year and a half. It's kind of like, okay, you proved you got better. You proved you could be a good player. Now do it again, and it, then we'll pay. Because now we're talking extension. We're talking seeing this into the, the future. Yeah. Right? Like we, we think you are going to help our team for the foreseeable future. Uh, Chris, what do you think about this? Do you think it would be the right time to extend him? No, I do not. Uh, I don't think you can afford any more big extensions right now. So that's why I wouldn't. I'd still be more inclined to trade him, try to get a package of players that can help fill some of the holes they have. But it does seem like talk of that has cooled considerably. Yeah. Uh, on the chat, Sherry said, hey, Chris, 
I have one of the nicest dogs you will ever meet. He is a German Shepherd. He has been attacked more times by little dogs than big dogs. <laughs> you can't you can't measure the dog by its size, There's... rather by its bite. Quit giving Scraby a hard time. Thank I, you, Sherry. I know one of the funnier things to see is a big dog and having to deal with a bunch of little Running dogs. Around, right. Yeah. They don't really want to like step on the little dog either. But they're like being the ankles are being attacked by the little dog. <laughs> so they're like kind of like jumping around. Yeah, now I can see that. There's a puppy in the house too, and the puppy is very small. And the puppy, I would say, should not be at the park because it's it's aggressive. Yeah, I, I listen when we when I have I have two golden duels, one medium large size, one small size. And when we brought the small size one, Axel, the big one seems so annoyed like all the time like this dog is licking he's biting my face he's biting my feet like get this thing out of here you could they almost could hear him say that are they friends <laughs> yeah no they love each other now they can't get okay good other. good number four that's usually how it works out uh i want everybody to know out there i had to stick up for my dog and the size of you, my you dog did. Did. in case my wife was listening <laughs> <laughs> don't make any hey, mistake about that. maltesis are very um they're not mean but they're they can they can hold their own well uh, she she's a definite barker but she's she's not gonna hold her own against you know those dogs that are five times her size no. No, that's true. Um, former Astros closer Ryan P Presley talked to reporters after the Astros named Josh Hader the closer of the team, and reporters asked him if he was surprised. He said, quote, yeah, it was a surprise, but he makes our team better. He's hand down, hands down one of the best relievers in the game. I'm happy he's here and happy to share the bullpen with him. It's going to be a fun time. He seems like a great teammate, end quote. Very good job of being a great teammate there, Ryan Presley, because I know that he's probably upset, he was demoted but chris which is more important a great eighth inning guy or a closer you can't get to the closer without a great eighth inning guy yeah it's nice to have them both i'm gonna go with the closer okay just because if you give up the lead in the eighth inning you at least have an at bat or maybe two to catch up give up the lead in the bottom of the ninth you, it's game over yeah so I'm going to say the closer, but you're right. I mean, bullpens have shown here recently that you, it's a it's a group effort down there. It is. It really isn't just turning it over to one guy anymore. Uh, Tony, what do you think? Do you think uh, which is more important, a great eighth inning guy or a closer? Um, I think they're both great to have, but I think the closer is still the more important. Those last three outs of the game can sometimes be the hardest three outs you have to get. Uh, of course, there are always, you know, situations where that's different, right? Uh, you know, the 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 few times where the three, three, four, five come up in the eighth, and in, in a in a one run ball game. So those they're they're always going to be different. If, it's nice to have a good eighth and ninth inning because you don't have to necessarily worry about, you know, moving a guy up an inning because of, of where the spot in the the lineup is. So. Um, I think these two are going to complement each other because you got one righty, one lefty, and I can easily see a scenario in which uh, Hader is going to be the closer. But there's some righties matchups that maybe they like a little bit more with Presley. They can do that. That gives them some flexibility. But I still think the ninth inning closer spot is still the mo more important spot, right. and it shows because they because they pay that spot the most. <laughs> that just came up in the <laughs> chat by Dan. Eighth innings don't get paid much. More. That's why Ryan Presley's probably a little upset. Well, he got his money already. Oh, did so he? Good. Okay, yeah. good. Good for him. So one thing I've always wondered, and I've never been able to find out what it's like, but I've been wondering what it feels like to wake up Monday morning after you lose the Super Bowl, which the 49ers did. And we, f we have found out what 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy thought. Here he is talking to reporters about Monday morning when he woke up. Um, Obviously the game. You know, uh, us, you know, how, how we came up short. Um, you know, obviously it's a, it's a sucky feeling, but um, I also am trying to have the perspective of, all right, this is happening for a reason. You know, it's all part of all of our stories and stuff and, and our testimonies. So um, that's sort of the hope that I have for it. And, and more than anything, just being grateful for the kind of season that we had with the guys in this locker room, this team, this organization. Um, you know, we got to the Super Bowl, we went to overtime, we fell short of it sucks we wanted it we gave our all this year 
but man, did I, I had the I had the opportunity to do it with some really good people, and I'm thankful for that. Man, how could you hate that guy? He is just wise beyond his years. I don't know That's anybody who does hate him. Actually, that was the most boring answer I've ever heard. I I didn't say he was entertaining. I said that he's. I don't know anybody. Wise beyond I don't his know years. anybody who hates Brock Purdy. Um, nobody. Well, everybody who says he's a game manager. That doesn't mean they hate him. All right, fine. We're running out of time. Tony, on a scale of one to ten, rate his response. We got a whole another hour after this. Rate his response one to ten. Ten being you're very impressed by it. One being it was stupid. I mean. <laughs> I would say five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't impressed. I certainly didn't think it was stupid. It was just, you know, kind of, um, it wasn't a run of the mill answer, but it wasn't. That's anything. not a run of the mill answer. What, what did he say? That was, uh, was, what did he say? That was extraordinary. I would have, no, I like that. I like what that. Did he say no, that I liked? liked that Brock Purdy is a young, cause I know at his age, I was not thinking about the did, great me, things in my life. So I was you thought he was going to wake up and do this interview and be like, you know what, man, it just sucks today, man. We lost the Super Bowl, and I'm just sad. Like, what did you, what did you expect he was going to say? I, beginning of the the uh topic i've been wondering what it feels like so he told me <laughs> now you know i got a five that is five. a question i'm not even gonna ask chris no too bad i'm two. giving him a four and i'm dropping it down to a two <laughs> because he said one of my least favorite things and that is we gave it all this season <laughs> yes why I is that Garrett, what? Because, because, that is so, the, because the cleveland browns gave it there all this season and so did the new Are orleans sure? saints yes, yes Are i am sure? yes i'm yes yes Are everybody sure? goes out there and plays their butts off every sunday 49ers just had more talent than the rest of them. We gave teams. it our all. Next Great time yeah. Tua says I gave it because Tua is he's right out of the stock I'll answer. Drop book. him. I'll drop him. I'll dock him for that answer as well. He'll dock him. Yes, I will. We tried. We tried. Yeah. I'm not even going to read the next one because uh, we, we're going to have to you do know, it. We're, on the we're other such side. a we're such a good group, man. We 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 never give up, as opposed to all <laughs> of the teams out there who give up. <laughs> You hear it every time a team comes from 10 points behind to win a game. Sounds we just, like we just never gave up. Chris. It's just our ability to never give up. Sounds really? like um, we what? don't quit. Come on, please. When we get back, we're going to finish the last two. Dustin Johnson is telling people, well, I want to ask you, I'll just ask you a question. Is the world golf ranking a sham for you right now? And also, Chris Mad Dog Russo is making news, and I want to get a little bit of your opinion on why he is making that news. So, that's what we'll talk about when we get back. And I'm going to go and talk more about Chris's dog in the break, everybody. <laughs>
get into the happy hour. Quinn and Chris, Scraby, 97.3 The Fan, and also on YouTube. Search 97.3 The Fan. You can watch the program. We kick off the final hour with something that I am dying to get to here. <laughs> what if I could tell the big you? Five? Oh, don't be interrupting me. I know we have a couple of big five things, but that's going to have to wait. What if I told you that we all now know that Patrick Mahomes knew that the 49ers were making a grave mistake on the overtime coin flip, and he knew it the minute it happened. Yeah. Now, we have we have come across video that confirms this, and I told Scraby during the break, I said, oh, we got to play this. This is interesting stuff. Scraby goes, absolutely not. <laughs> People are sick of <laughs> the I Super go, Bowl talk, I, okay? <laughs> He says, people are sick of the Super Bowl. He goes, oh, the Super Bowl handed four days ago. We don't want to hear about it. But this is, Tony's got it on his phone. Uh, and a, since you're not going to play it, we're going to have to play it without We're going to play another mic. And, and I want to also point out that the whole idea that the Niners were on the field like naked, like they didn't know the rules. I don't know that we ever said that. We didn't, but that's how it's been portrayed. Like they went out on the field. They Isn't that didn't... a media problem, yeah. not a player problem? I'm saying, well, okay, well, if, for, if it's a media problem, we're going to fix this media problem when we play this clip right here. And for those who are watching on YouTube, I am going to put my phone on this mic because that's the only way we're going to be able to listen to it. So well, people are tired of this. Here we go. Call the coin flip. Instead of coin flip, right? Which way do you want to kick it? We want the ball, Fred. That's Kyle Shanahan talking to Fred. What is your call? Tails again. He called tails again. It is tails. You want the ball? Which way do you want to kick it? San Francisco will see Fitzgerald. Good luck, gentlemen. They want the ball. They want it. Hey, they want it. They want it, baby. We want them to have the ball. They want it. They can have it. Hey, even if we score a touchdown, they still get the ball. I didn't know that. All right, so let's recap everything that happened there. You heard at the very beginning, Mahomes was talking to Andy Reid, saying it's their coin flip. Which way do you want to kick? Then you heard Kyle Shanahan say to Fred, Fred we Fred want Warner. the ball being Fred Warner who called the coin toss. Then we heard the coin toss. The rest of it was Patrick Mahomes running off the field going, they want the ball. They want the ball. <laughs> Guys, they want the ball. He said it like five times, and he finally said they want it. They can have it. And, and Scraby, before I and mess up the one last thing, yeah, sorry, Tony, yeah, the yeah. final thing was you're sick or somebody on the 49ers sideline yes, saying, hey, even if they score a touchdown, the game's not over. So the 49ers clearly knew the rules. Right. That's That was the most important part because whether it's a media problem or 49ers, and Scraby's probably right, the media has kind of portrayed it as if the Niners went out there and not were, having and a not clue what was going on, what was happening. They they executed exactly what the coach wanted, and if they didn't know that the out the overtime rules, they knew it before they took the field. So yes, they did. That's uh, you know, that's I thought that was important because it's, it's a fugazi been out there that the Forty exactly. ers were just running around blindly <laughs> with absolutely no clue. But I find it pretty interesting that Patrick Mahomes was I don't know if I'm going to say savvy enough. Because at the time that Kyle Shanahan took the ball, I personally thought that's what I would have done. Yep. But Patrick Mahomes, he knew immediately that See, that was not the right thing to do. And he he clear, uh, made it pretty clear as he was running off the field that he was really happy. They took the ball. And to me, <laughs> he was kind of surprised. Yeah, he couldn't believe and it. And to me, I think that also proves a point that they would have gone for two. Why else would you be that giddy? I believe about them. them. I believe them the that ticket. they're going to go for two. But. Let's just talk about it all works out for them. And this all would never come out if the 49ers end up winning yes, the game. it would have. This is, you know where I got that that from? Uh, inside the NFL? Exactly. So they no. are going to play that. No, yeah, of course they're going to play that. They're not going to be like, if they if the Chiefs lost, they're not going to play Patrick Mahomes being excited that right. they got but the you, ball. You know what they, yes, they would have played it. You know what they would have played? They would have looked different. Kyle Shannon had said, yeah, we want the ball. He looks like a genius if they end up winning that game. But they did. The whole thing with the Chiefs going in, going for two. Number one, I think that would have been one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. It would have been great, great theater. Number two, like 
it's great that they were going to go for two, but we're all assuming they're going to get, they're no. going to convert the two point yeah, conversion. It's and easy. it's not that after, after easy. watching them score the last play of the game. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to get to. I bet you they, they will cover the flats on the two point conversion. <laughs> I bet you they would. The bottom line of all of this is the fact that we are on your side, Scraby, in terms of when Kyle Shanahan said he wanted the ball. My first thought was I agreed with him, but in the, you know, time since that happened, not necessarily even the way the game played out, but just the, in the strategy. time since that happened, the strategy now that we've all thought it through seems to indicate that that was the wrong decision. And I'm saying I was wrong too because yeah. I thought I he thought made the, the right decision. Did, but I tell me, too. but so tell you're me getting why. Defensive for no, 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 no. Yes, tell, but, but honestly, tell me why. Uh, tell me why putting the entire season on a two point conversion is the right call. Because again, because they could have lost the game, and then it's like, well, they should have taken the ball first. No, Maybe because, they stopped a, the, 49ers. because a, the two point conversion is a 50 50 proposition. Tying the game and giving the third possession to the other team in a sudden death situation is much less than 50% that they're going to go down and kick a field goal. So that's why going for two makes sense as the second team. Right. No, I'm yes. not arguing that. I'm not well, arguing what are you that. you arguing? Because they could still go for two if they got the ball first. Yeah, but. <laughs> All right. You can't push your mic away because you still got two more questions to ask. <laughs> Sorry. Just slammed the microphone. <laughs> Sorry. That was not a mic drop statement. That was, right a, there. That was a mic By the push. way, everyone, they brought this back up. It was not me. It was I'm fun. taking a lot of heat for how much I talk about the 49ers. And you We're know not what? even talking about the 49ers. We're just talking, We're talking about, about the strategy. football strategy yeah, right now. That's it. That's all. Let's get us back to the, the big five. Man. Get back to the big five now. Don't Come even on. get me started about what. Get us Brady to your, get us to, get us to your stage. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Here He's so go. right. Number two. All right. I don't even want to look at the chat right now. So I'm going to say incredibly the way. stupid they took the ball. <laughs> Real quick. It's incredibly <laughs> stupid because they lost the game. Real quick. That the sound was very good in your phone. So what? from now, yeah. So we're from now on, straight off from phone. now on, just stop waiting around for Scravy. Just we're gonna play stuff off your phone. Ooh, Scravy, get off the chat. No, Let Anthony has a great two. point. Anthony has a great point. Are there sources or stats on if two point conversion is really 50 50? Yes, it is. The stats say it's about 50 50, maybe 49.8. That's not 50 50. Uh, 49.8 you know actually is not 50. Very I'm close. actually going to yeah. go look this up because Chris had that number Scrape, two you readily two available. Questions. You want another it. carryover of the big five? You guys did this. <laughs> Let's go. Get off of it. Let's go. So the pairing of Stephen A. Smith and Chris Mad Dog Russo is pretty successful. In January, I don't think they, I don't think these two guys fight like we fight sometimes. Though. They don't. Yeah, it's a lot more and in, in good fun for them. Yeah, it's actually real <laughs> for us. Uh, in January, first take had its most watched month in the 16 year history of the show. Didn't know that show was on for 16 years, but they averaged 680 thousand viewers. That was up 21 percent from last January when he uh, Mad Dog Russo started appearing on first take in early 2022. Russo admitted to Howard Stern that ESPN was paying him $10,000 per show over 40 weeks. Only Howard Stern can get somebody to True. admit that, too, by the way. No kidding. Uh, the, but Everybody feels like Howard Stern is the one place to bear your soul. Yeah, really, he really Tell is. Tell him whatever. <laughs> um, so what ESPN did instead is they have extended Mad Dog Russo. They're not giving any details on this, but it's safe to assume he's going to be getting a raise. Chris? What has made Mad Dog relevant for so long? The same thing that makes you relevant. He says crazy stuff, and he says it with a <laughs> bunch of energy. <laughs> Great. Do you day, think he Frank. believes all of his crazy stuff? Uh, not to the extent that he presents it. Okay. I think he believes the side he takes, but I think he presents it in a in a fashion that is you know, quite a bit showmanship. But I like it. Most yeah. people do. Um, do you think I believe all the crazy things I say? Ninety no, percent, no, but it's yeah, 90, most, yeah okay. a lot of nine out of ten. Yes. Uh, okay, um, Tony, what has made Mad Dog relevant for so long? I'm not sure, honestly. Um, I didn't come into Mad Dog if I'm being honest until he was on high heat baseball, and then the 30 for 30 came out there shortly after, and then I learned that he was has kind of been in this game doing well for a long period of time. Um, and I wasn't sure how this pairing was going to work with him and Stephen A. But 
I think in some ways, Stephen A has kind of lightened him up a little bit. He's he's a much more fun character than on on first take than he is on high heat, where I just think of him yelling all the time. And don't get me wrong, he yells on first take, but it's it's in a fun way that's different. Um, yeah, it's like a fun debate. Yeah, it's like a it's like a fun maniac sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like yelling, but he's got kind of a smirk on his face, which is different than high heat. But in terms of his longevity, I mean, clearly he knows how to entertain. He knows how to push buttons, right? He does. Um, but he doesn't come off like a, you know, arrogant jerk. I was going to use a different word, but yeah. What were you going to use? Something I like a know it all, like a hole. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh <laughs> yeah. wow. Okay, there it is. <laughs> and he doesn't come off like that. He comes off like, like he's got some fun to him, even though he's you know older. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Whoops. Dustin Johnson is now with Liv, and he just got done beating Peter Uline and Who's Taylor that? Gooch. Dustin I know, Johnson. I know who Gooch is. I don't know who Peter Uline. Uline is. Yeah, he's been around. I don't even know if he's won a tournament, but he plays for Liv. Oh, okay. And so Dustin Johnson won the actual tournament at uh, Live Las Vegas. And even though he won, he actually fell to number 231 in the world golf rankings because Live players aren't awarded ranking points. But Johnson isn't worried because he has his uh, he has his spot in the Masters. And he said to everyone, well, not to everyone, but he said that he's just focused on the Masters. And that's all he wants to do is win the Masters this year. So the field better watch out. Tony. Is the world golf ranking a sham to you now? Uh, I don't know that it's a sham, but it can't necessarily be accurate as much as I hate to say this. Yeah. Without the likes of a Dustin Johnson. Uh, eventually, John Rahm is going to start trickling, oh, yeah, trickling his way out. Yeah. You can't tell me he's not one of the best golfers in the world. No, he is. Um, so, I mean, I guess to answer your question – it kind of has to be a sham. I get why they're doing it. You know, Liv is not sanctioned in terms of these points that they hand out. Um, but, you know, the question in itself, is it a sham? Right now, you have to say, yeah. Chris, what do you think? Uh, world golf rankings don't mean a thing to me or to anybody else other than maybe Scotty Scheffler because he's at the top of those rankings. Uh, anything that has Ludwig Aberg. <laughs> rated ahead of <laughs> Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kep. I mean, who's Ludwig Aberg? I don't know. He's the eleventh ranked golfer you know in the world. Scrape? I don't know if you Lud knew that, Scrape. Ludwig van Beethoven's long lost nephew. Yeah, that's who it is. And my point is, is, really? is no, <laughs> none of us care about these rankings. We care about you know the names of the people we're familiar with, and you know as as long as the live and the PGA, all those guys are split up. Golf's going to have an issue that needs to be fixed. That is true. All right, that's it for the big five. Very All good. right, that big five. Never I'm really up. excited that we found out how your phone works so well <laughs> on the uh, – because I get tired of asking Scraby to, you know, look up stuff and record stuff, and he gets mad. He doesn't want to do Scrape, it. You know what? Now, now we just can bypass Scraby altogether. It's, Scrape, it's fantastic. Scraby hates when I send him, like, Instagram stuff. Instagram is the worst platform to play audio it's, from. It's hard to get the audio – so now he can just say, no, you know what? Just keep that on your phone. You no, can we can't do that. It has to go through the board. I was taking a, a, a stand against you playing that because I saw it earlier and I'm so tired. I tried of everybody to... saying the G Chiefs are genius. And I know I look like a hater. You you, you don't look like it. You are being a hater right now. Chris, Mike says on the chat, Poinsettia Dog Park in Carlsbad has both a large dog and separate small dog area. I oh, think you should come up, and you, Lucky and Kylie would go to the park together. It does. That's I, I go nice, to that park quite uh, often. That's nice. The one in Carlsbad? Yes. To move Carlsbad a little closer to where I live, that would be <laughs> helpful. But... I was just thinking, Tony doesn't live anywhere near I Carlsbad. I sure don't. Yeah, okay. Fine. Well, it must but be a great you, dog Mike, park. That, that, that's nice to know, though, because we really, we've not taken our dog to a dog park for 10 years because of that issue. And now maybe we can take her to one. Let me ask you this question. Is Kylie, does she, is she friendly with the other dogs? Does she play with the other dogs or is she kind of keep to herself? She pays them no attention. Okay. Well, well then she maybe really she doesn't does. miss it. I have a confession to make. My, uh, my oldest dog, Axel, we don't take him to the dog. He's not a dog, dog type of person. He's a dog, human <laughs> type. Of person. Like he is much more uh, predictable with humans 
in a way than than he is with other dogs. So when mm. other dogs get around, he is like turns into turns into an actual guard dog. You know, I have a really dog human good dog human relationship, yeah. but I have a terrible human human relationship. Yes, you do. So. You don't like humans very much. No, right? that's why me and Lucky, Lucky and I just hang out. <laughs> lucky, Lucky. <laughs> by the way, Caitlin, by the way, Caitlin Clark has not only already broken the record for most points in a career, she's put in 18 points in the first quarter. Oh, wow. Tonight. Okay, okay, so her over-under. That 36 <laughs> that over under is right now. quaking right now. Now she's up to 21, still in the first quarter. Wow. what are, I mean, we got to get that game on. She might go for 100 tonight. Crazy. She's All dropping right. from the logo, apparently. Apparently again, yeah. All right. Uh, we got a break. Coming on back, we got our interview of the day. We got more Gwen and Chris. Stick around. The happy hour continues. From the
Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the 30 mile zone. 523 on the clock. What happened? You guys are laughing. Because we were just talking about while you're out, out of the room and we felt like there wasn't enough time to do it with our, our replay. <laughs> and you, you sat down before I could say anything. Dang it. Uh, we I have a few stories we could talk about for sure. We only got like six minutes to kill. All right, let's do it. I'm not going to play the open because I don't have it ready, but... Oh, okay. Fine. I will play the open. <laughs> if you don't know your sports gossip, can you really call yourself a sports fan? It's time to bring together sports and celebrity gossip. We call it the 30 Mile Zone. Mainly so we don't get sued by the real company. On 97.3 The Fan. All right. Caitlin so, Clark still rocking the Bruce Lee, Kobe Bryant. Oh, you were looking at her oh, shoes. Of course I Wait, was. Wait, Kobe has Bruce Lee shoes? He was uh, a big fan of Bruce Lee. So every year he made a Bruce Lee version of wow. his whatever his new shoe was. I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. All right. Well, Be the like 30 water. Mile Zone is the official name for TMZ. And so we just kind of go through some celebrity sports gossip. We also talk about stories of, in sports that we normally wouldn't talk about. But have you heard what happened with P.J. Tucker, guys? Yeah, P.J.'s not very happy with the no, Clips row right now. No, no. He plays for the Lakers. No, the he Lakers. does not. Sorry, he plays for the Clippers. Plays for the Clippers. And he was fined $75,000 for publicly saying he wanted to be traded earlier this month. He said that... He said, I want to be somewhere where I'm needed, wanted, and can do it all. And he also said to reporters that he was thinking about packing up his shoes so that he can get up out of there. But yeah. $75,000, I didn't know you couldn't ask for a trade publicly. Well, yeah, well, this is why agents do it generally, because they can't find the agents. You know, usually it's Rich Paul or somebody saying, my client wants to be traded. Yeah. And there's a reason for that, because $75,000 later, P.J. Tucker is like, dang. I should have had my agent do this, but <laughs> uh, it speaks to the front, the type, the amount of frustration he's having right now, because I think, I believe they sent him home uh, before the all-star break started. Um, and he was expected. He was, I think he was expecting to be traded at the deadline when that didn't happen. That's when um, the fine came up on top of it. So wait, hold on, hold on. There we go. Sorry. He has a play. I don't know. Hey, Never mind. Whatever I had to say wasn't that important. <laughs> no, go for it. I'm sorry. I mean, the time has gone. He now. hasn't played in how many games? Since November 27th. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. All right. Good that stuff, good. guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that... You now, know, here's no, one. I did it. I'm sorry. I, I got you guys in this little kerfuffle. It's okay. Here's one that I really... This is, this is the spirit of the 30-mile zone. Did you guys know that Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan broke up? They broke up, but they are <laughs> back together. They oh. were seen enjoying a nice Valentine's Day dinner out in Could Miami. Could be a rebound. Could be a rebound of day. themselves. I was it's been I, known to happen. Yeah, you have a brief return after a breakup, then you then you really make know that it doesn't work yeah, at right. that point. I'm just saying it could be. Maybe I, I'm not gonna really lie. There, there was a piece of me that was like. You know, I, I'm sad that they're not happy anymore, but maybe Michael and Scotty can, like, patch it up. Yeah. Now. It doesn't gonna, seem like the best connection. It's, it's going to be hard to patch it up as long as his son is dating his ex-wife. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there was that hope. So, you know. But if those two are happy, i tell you what. My wife watches uh, Housewives of, I believe that's Miami. Uh, you yeah, believe you're right. And, I don't want to admit to that, but I mean, it's on in my household so often. So it's on every day in my yeah, household. Yeah. One of them housewife shows is yeah. on. <laughs> and I will say, uh, Marcus Jordan, good young man. Seemed like a he, very he, nice he, young man. He, he's he's well put together, well spoken. He yeah. I don't know what he's of, doing with her. She yeah. seems like a loon to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, That's a fact. Well, she married Scotty Pippen, and he's kind of a loon, isn't he? <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, man, I, I hope they. I hope they're happy. You are such a different person than me. Because the first thing I thought <laughs> when I saw this story was karma. <laughs> karma. <laughs> it's just a weird couple to begin with. Uh, yeah, uh, it is a bad story out of LSU football. LSU running oh, back yeah. Trey Hawley, who played in three games for them last year, was arrested today in Louisiana and booked on several felony charges, including attempted second degree murder. The sheriff. Jeez 
said Holly turned himself into authorities with his attorney around nude. And in addition to the attempted murder charge, he was also booked for felony aggravated criminal damage to property and felony illegal use of a weapon. Um, the sheriff said the incident took place at an apartment complex following a disturbance at a previous location and left two people, one male and one female, hospitalized. So Holly is now being held on $512,000 bond. And LSU said in a statement shortly after, they are aware that a student athlete has been arrested in relation to a shooting in Union Parish. So yeah. there you go. Not good stuff there. Not good. No comments. Okay. No, nothing for that. Okay. Uh, there are some pretty incredible stories coming out of the parade yesterday. Yes. And so TMZ has these, if you would like to go and see some of them, but the guy, one of the guys who tackled the shooter said that he basically had no second, second thoughts about running after this guy. Uh, another guy said that one of the gunmen was firing in a circle around himself. So there were lots of crazy things, but what I'm bringing this up for is that, this guy put his life on the line along with several other people to chase down this person with the gun and tackle them. And as they tackled him, a big gun, he said, fell out of the person, you know, pocket or jacket or whatever. And he said he, he just feels for everybody, everybody. And he said he would have done it again if he had to. So that's a hero right there. Yeah, uh, there were a lot of them last yesterday at that event. Uh, including some of the chiefs. I think Andy Reid, I saw a young man talking about his experience. He seemed shaken, but he said Andy Reid there was the whole time, had his arm around him, was kind of keeping him positive before he had to leave to go check on other people. Um, it's amazing when you get into those situations, the the good in people tend to show up. Yeah, um, I give Jackson Mahomes a really hard time. They're just Patrick Mahomes' little brother. I give him a really hard time, but I will say I read some stuff yesterday about him trying to help a little kid find his parents. So, um, you know what? You're a good person if you're going to help a little kid find their parents in the midst of all of that. So, I will say the good, but I will also say the bad. Did yeah. DJ yes. Khaled play himself this week? That's great. <laughs> yes, he did because he got pulled over in a golf cart. Driving yeah, a little golf cart. cart. You live in Florida, man. That's, that's, that's a what Miami. Does. That's a Miami state. That's what I thought. You it's gotta a drive around sweet in your golf, golf cart. cart. Do you think he uh, told the police, "Hey, congratulations, you played yourself"? Yeah. He this should. Is, this if is he did. DJ Khaled. They would have let him go if he would have said DJ that. DJ Khaled, we the boost. <laughs> Isn't that what he says <laughs> yes. every single time? <laughs> we the boost. Yeah. All right. That's it for a very abridged version. Whatever of happened to me? Didn't also. you get a golf cart? Once for as a gift? Oh, when I was a little, when I was a oh, kid. What did you do with it? We drove them bad boys until the wheels fell off. <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> I, I, I credit my pops and those golf carts for my driving skills getting to a peak early. Like, I, oh. I was comfortable behind the wheel because of those golf carts. I did not realize you were going to go in that direction. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you were like um, the kid from Blank Check. Remember that kid who... It was a Disney movie. I, I vaguely remember where he wrote like a check for a million bucks and they gave him a million dollars and he bought like this mansion. And then it was weird because the police officer who was undercover and also over the age of 18 was dating a kid that was 13. So that was kind of strange, but I don't remember this. You actually. don't remember that. No. Okay. All right. All right. Let's well, get to break. There you go. <laughs> when we return, uh, you'll get to hear Sean Lewis, San Diego State's football coach joined us earlier. Get ready to uh, run through something and knock somebody down. Be ready to want to pancake someone in your household when it's all said. <laughs> That's right. right. More Gwen and Chris on the way. It is skinny. Chris Ello here for SD. I'm trying to do Ben Higgins doing morning rap. Uh, I'm going to stop doing that. <laughs> SD Fat Loss, though, you know they helped me lose 37 pounds, and I've kept the weight off thanks to their great maintenance program. I appreciate everything that SD Fat Loss has done for me, and you will appreciate what they can do for you. 
Uh, you can find out the secret to losing up to a pound of fat every single day naturally, safely, and effectively. No exercise, no counting calories, and no prepackaged meals. I think that's one of the most important things of all. But in order for this to all happen and to work, you got to call them, 858-665-3211, 858-665-3211, It is a, uh, it's a doing something fantastic for yourself. And uh, here we are into a month number two of this new year. You've waited around long enough. SD Fat Loss at 858-665-3211, online, sdfatloss.com. I lost 37 pounds. It works. It'll work for you. Give it a chance. You've got nothing to lose but the weight itself.
Thanks again to Caitlin Clark, the Iowa sharpshooter, is the all-time leading scorer in uh, NCAA women's college basketball history. She uh, surpassed the eight points needed tonight, and she's still going rather strong, Tony. She's got 28 in the first half as Iowa is ahead of Michigan. Yeah, that 36 doesn't look like it's going to last very long. Right, our over-under from earlier in the program. 26, she's got uh, eight assists, too, just for just for good shape. Having quite the game. Uh, all right, and it's fantastic because we have a women's basketball game on here in the studio, which is something that wouldn't have happened a couple of years ago. Yeah. So she's uh, really helping the sport blossom. And that's uh, that's good news for everybody. Uh, other news today before we get to our interview of the day. Pretty quiet, really. Um, you know, in fact, that's it. I can't think of anything else that happened. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with something. Did, did you? Did you? Was there really? Rob Manfred will retire. That's that's going to be that's going to perk up your ears until I tell you that he's not retiring until 2029. So yeah. you got to wait five more years. For It'll that. be a while. Yeah. You put your name in the hat, Tony, for commish? Absolutely not. Why? Yeah. Why would I want that job? I don't want. Sounds work. like kind of a fun. I job. mean, you get you get paid a lot of money. That's yeah. that's. Could you imagine from. those thirty people among them, Dick Monfort, trying Ooh. to tell you what to do? Good, good point. I'd be a turncoat, though. I'd be like moving. I, you know. I'm, no, but you would be the bridge between nah, the front not, office that's and not, the players. That's not how it works, dog. That's not how it works. You okay. come in once I take over as commissioner. I am now working. For the owners, yeah, and you'd have trouble ever ruling against the players. <laughs> you can play. I know that. You can play disruptor. You can yeah. mess everything up. Yeah, I don't want to be a disruptor. All right. Uh, ESPN Plus. I paid for this. Uh, <laughs> listed its most intriguing player for every baseball team this year. Wow. I'm not exactly sure what intriguing player means, but they chose for the Padres Yuki Matsui. So. I saw him. For what on that's the, worth, I saw him predicted to be on the all rookie team this well, year. Well, that would be a nice yeah. thing. It would be nice to have go right alongside uh -huh. of him. Heck yes, on the all rookie team and Jackson Merrill too. Heck Why yes. not? Let's have them all. I like Jackson Merrill, man. I think he's got a chance. To a lot of people think he's going to be the starting. I what, left, left fielder? fielder. I wouldn't be surprised at all, man. Or center fielder, even. He just has. There's the just something. And left. There's something about him. Like it's 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 not. It doesn't like jump off the page like it did for Nat for Fernando, but it just seems like he's going to be a solid ball player. Well, if you're a Padre fan out there, that would be something you would definitely be hoping for. Yeah, because that would solve a lot of issues. Uh, Sean Lewis has come in and taken the San Diego State football program by storm. He will uh, debut on the field with his Aztecs come late August, but he debuted on Gwyn and Chris. Joining us for the first time earlier today, and uh, I think uh, if you like him the way we like him, that's all good thing. Here's traffic before you hear from Sean Lewis. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danick. Going to find plenty of company on the roads this afternoon. A crash on the westbound 52 before Kearneyville Road. One vehicle in the center divide, one over to the right shoulder. Accident has cleared on southbound 5 before Claremont Mesa Boulevard. Now closer to the border, south 5, right around Camino de la Plaza. There's a collision involving a couple cars there over the right shoulder. A tow truck has cleared this accident northbound 5 at the east 8 transition. Now southbound 15, just past the 8, we have reports of a stalled vehicle in the slow lane. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwen and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. We are being joined by San Diego State head football coach Sean Lewis. This is a big gift for us, Sean. Thank you for coming on today. How are you? Guys, I'm doing great. Appreciate the opportunity for jumping on with you guys. First, before we get into any football stuff, I have to ask you, now that I found out that you, you're going to be in the softball game that I will be a head coach of, do you, <laughs> do you hit lefty? Do you hit righty? Where, where are we at? I'm a righty, and, and my strike zone is probably way too big. <laughs> That's all right. That's the beauty of softball is you can have a bigger strike zone and have a ton of success. If you get Tony as your manager, you're going to have a big leaguer to help you work on your swing. So you'll be. I good. need all the help I can get. <laughs> well, Coach, listen, I, we'll, we'll take care of you when, you when we get to that point. But let's talk about this football team and this upcoming year. The city is it's seemingly a, a buzz right now since you've arrived. You've already been able to bring some some – great talent alongside uh to to join this team just talk about your expectations for this program moving forward 
yeah, you know, I mean, we talked about it yesterday as a team and, you know, we've been building this culture. And for me, it's, it's about constant improvement and constant competition, right? We need to do a great job. And the staff has done a tremendous job of building the competitive maturity of our team, the competitive depth of our roster. And right now the guys have been working really, really hard. It, it's kind of hard to put a, an idea of where we're going to be or what we're going to look like because we haven't put any pads on right now. And we don't get a chance to do that until spring ball here coming up in March. But I'm excited with the way the guys are working and the energy that they're bringing to the building each and every single day. And, you know, with the talent that's right in our backyard, there, there's no reason why we shouldn't be competing for championships year in and year out as we get them to the building, as we develop those guys to fit our style of play. Sean, what is your style of leadership? How would you describe that? Uh, I mean, this is a, obviously a wonderful opportunity for you to be a head coach at a major Division I college football program. Sure, you had to sell yourself to the university. And so far, what you've been selling to this fan base and the people in San Diego, it seems to me they've been buying it. And I think everybody, like Tony said, is really excited. What's your? How would you describe how you went about this process? Yeah, I mean, you know, being very detail oriented, um, having processes and systems in place when, when you're running an organization as large as the football team is with 120 guys and, you know, another 100 staff members. I think you got to be very detailed and very uh, clear in, in how you communicate and what you want to get done set forth clear standards, clear expectations. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think if I had to put a label on myself in any sort of way, I'd be, I would say that I'm a player's coach because I don't know what other type of coach there is, right? Like that we're here as a staff to serve our kids and it's our job to take them and get them to a place and this organization, you know, that they couldn't get to on their own. I think that's what great coaches do and, and that's what we have to do by building up the young men that are in our organization and build trust with them to have strong bonded relationships right and, and, and then because of that then the kids will truly care about you know what we know and our expertise so that we can help them grow as young men and as players coach Lewis, i, I want to go back a little bit to the beginning before you took the job with san diego state obviously san diego state had tremendous um, interest in you but on the flip side of that you would have to have interest in the the school what was it, aside from the weather and the city itself, uh, what was it about this school that made it attractive to you? Uh, the, the number one thing, you know, is that you need talent and you need players. And, and that's your most valuable resource that you have, the, the talent pool, to, to be able to, to win at a really, really high level. And, and obviously the talent and the level of high school football that's being played here in Southern California, I think is second to none. So yeah. that was really, really um, attractive to me that I could wake up in my home and, and leave bright and early and go hit 10 to 12 high schools in a day, see tremendous uh, young men, visit with great coaches, be a resource for them, and then be able to turn around and still be home to help my wife with bed and bath time. Um, you know, yeah. so that was really, really important to me, um, you know, and be there for our kids. And, and, and so also, you know, the, the winning tradition um, and, and the history of this program, to me, if you could do it once, you can do it again. And uh, obviously we've won quite a few championships here, going all the way back to Coach uh, Coriel and, and the Air Coriel days, right? So all that time and, and the, the product that was put in the past and what we're going to be able to build in the future by handling the present right now is something I'm really, really excited about. Sean Lewis is with us, and of course, Sean, I know you were in Colorado last year. What is your, What do you think, or is there a difference in your mind between – Football played, say, in the Big 12 or the Pac-12, and football played in the Mountain West. They, you know, we've been we've been listening to this stuff for years and years and years out here. That you know what, uh, the Power Five conference is a whole nother world out there, et cetera, et cetera. Yet the Aztecs have been right there competing with these guys and and winning most of their Pac-12 games actually over the last 10 or 15 years. So I'm assuming you don't see a big difference between the two. No, I mean, I've been very fortunate in, in my time and in, in being a coach to where she was all the way down to the high school level, Division Two, FCS, Group of Five, Power Five, at all the various places that I've been. And when you step in between the white line, the, the passion and the purpose that the young men play with, there's not a huge difference. And, you know, if you're aligned as a team, you've got a great plan, and, and the kids are bought into that plan, I, I think that you know, anyone can beat anyone on any given day. Uh, and so, no, there, there's, there's not a huge difference when it comes to stepping in between those white lines and putting the ball down and getting after it. Head football coach Sean Lewis joins us here on Gwen and Chris. And Sean, I, one of the things that, you know, it seems to be a difficult landscape to navigate is 
the NIL, the transfer portal. What about that makes it it seems like you have you've you've had some success in those areas. What what is it about those two areas that has seemingly been a difficult landscape for some, but for yourself and others, it has been a little bit easier. I think it's kind of the mindset that you bring to it. We we talk to our kids all the time for any sort of skill set, it's a mindset, right? So I, I don't see the, the landscape of NIL and the recent changes of, in the portal as, as a perceived negative. To mm. me, they're opportunities, right? And, and it's an opportunity to roll your sleeves up, go do the work that, that winning requires. And it's a part of the game now that, that you have to embrace and that you have to educate yourself on. And as fast as everything is changing, I'm very fortunate to have an unbelievable staff with a lot of different experiences from a lot of different places. And we've been able to take their ideas, my own ideas, make them our ideas so that we can be super competitive in that space and to take that piece of the puzzle along with everything else that San Diego State has to offer and create a, you know, what we think is a remarkable experience for, for our young men to help them grow as young people, to get a tremendous degree, and, and to give them a athletic experience in this competitive arena um, that is that's second to none. Sean Lewis, football coach at San Diego State, uh, making his first stop here on Gwyn and Chris, and we're really excited to have him and uh, and have you here in San Diego, Sean. I mean, this San Diego State football program, I mean, it's coming off one bad season in terms of the record. Talk a little bit about where you felt you needed to attack in terms of, you know, skill players, line play, uh, you know, quarterbacks, wide receivers, defense. Where did you feel looking at this squad from last year? You felt you needed to do attack and recruiting, and and how do you feel you've done in accomplishing what you set out to do? Yeah, I, I think the biggest factors is always going to be for us is how can we build the most complete, big, athletic, fast, and physical, well-disciplined football team that we can. Right, so we really prioritize our our height, weight, speed measurables that that we can verify from different sources. And I thought our staff did a great job going out and acquiring some some great length, some great speed, um, some mid-skill players at the linebacker and tight end position um, that are able to play sideline to sideline and, and having a backer that in today's game, you know, that is able to run, you know, through the vertical seam and having a tight end that can do lots of different multiple things, um, both run and pass. Um, so I thought we did a great job in those areas. Um, you know, obviously having a quarterback is critically important. You know, when you when you when you get on the job and you get rolling, and the guy at Enterprise tells you, Coach, we need to we need to get some quarterbacks in this thing. You know, if that guy at Enterprise knows that, then I think that tells us kind of what we need to do. Um, so we were able to to you know fill those holes. We think, and again, we'll get to the field and get to work with how those guys process, and as the bullets start flying see what we have, you know, across the board. I think there's the, the job along our trenches is never going to be done. We can mm. never be complacent in that space, right? The, the game is one up front with those bigs along the O-line and the D-line. And, um, you know, I, I never rest easy in that regard, just knowing what a premium those body types are. You know, it doesn't matter what level of the game it is, but we need to continue to develop the guys that are in our building and look for the right talent that can join us here in the future. Who would have thunk an enterprise delivering an assist uh, to, the, to, to the to the San Diego State's football team, uh, Coach, I, I, I'm interested to know with all of the movement that's going to take place in terms of teams that are on the West Coast playing in conferences that are really uh, in the Midwest or or back East. When you go into a, a kid's house in Southern California, what typically are the things that matter most? I know it, you know for a long time it was you wanted to be in these Pac-12 conference. You wanted to be close to home. You wanted to be on the West Coast. But has the kids' mindset kind of changed now, especially with all this movement and teams on the West Coast now really playing and being centered in the Midwest or back East? Yeah, I, mean, I think the biggest thing, right, that, that's kind of shifted is, is that there used to be this big draw to play close to home, but with all the different uh, media outlets that are there, it doesn't matter if you're near or far, mm. the games are being broadcasted and, and, and your family and your friends can watch you play, right? So the biggest thing is what's going to be the fit for that individual family? What do they covet most? And, and to me, that that's 
where's the best opportunity for them to grow, for them to develop, and for them to get the exposure and the production that they want to ultimately pursue their dreams uh, of playing in the NFL, right? Like those are the guys that we want to hunt. Those are the guys that we want to be after that have high dreams, high aspirations, that want to be highly productive and, and maximize their opportunities. So, you know, we're, we're talking to families about that, how, you know, their skill set, their character makeup is a great fit for our brand of football. And that's going to lead to, you know, great results both on and off the field, but unbelievable production that's undeniable that NFL scouts have to go see and so that we can continue to do a great job of developing those pros here on the Mesa and helping them achieve their their dreams and their goals. Sean, thanks for the time. We've really enjoyed it. I want to throw one more at you real quick. Uh, just your thought on the state of college football. Tony mentioned the conference realignments, et cetera. Do you like the way the sport is headed right now or, or are some things you're concerned with? Uh, I mean, again, it's constantly evolving, right? I, I think, there, there's some great things that are happening for the, the players and the opportunities that are out there. I think there's some ways that we can modify it and, and make it better so that there can be a little bit more stability so yeah. that not every single time this portal window opens, you know, you're, it's unrestricted free agency across the board. But uh, again, there, there should be freedom. There should be flexibility. There should be the, the availability for choice. Um, but I think if we can do a better job of just, you know, putting a little bit more parameters in place so it's not just open season year round. Coach Lewis, uh, we super appreciate you coming on and, so, and spending so some time. Bring Scraby over here and line him up against me. I'm ready to one through a wall <laughs> <That's> <laughs> after, <cold. laughs> after this interview. I'm ready. <laughs> Coach, we appreciate you coming on. I'll see you out on the baseball diamond or the softball diamond, however you want to put it. But this city is extremely excited about you and this and this program, and uh, we'll be we'll be back behind you 100. percent Guys, appreciate it. Go Aztecs. Sean Lewis getting it done on the field. Well, that's all he has to do is get it done on the field. He's gotten it yeah. done off the field. That's all anybody's going to care about. Good catching up and meeting him on the program today for sure. Joe Musgrove was also on the show. If you missed that, 97.3thefanst.com or find it on the Odyssey app. We'll be back with four more hours tomorrow. Coming up next, this is Scraby Chronicles. Will, whatever is his daily gripe today, make me that mad tomorrow? My daily gripe today is going to be that Chris doesn't have any faith in Brock Purdy. So there you go. Fair enough. What, I'm going to be your gripe? Someone suggested I just do an hour show every day of me and the things that you bother me with. <laughs> just me, just one big daily That's gripe. That's entertaining. Yeah, an hour wouldn't be enough time. <clears throat> All right, Scraby's next. Gwen and Chris, back at you tomorrow. Sometimes your favorite sports teams disappoint you, but...